All right, we are live. Thank you for joining us again today. Today we're going to be talking with the Muslim Perfect Dawah. We're going to be getting some of his reasons why he believes that Islam is the best religion, why Islam is, or at least why he is a religion, uh, a Muslim. I shouldn't necessarily say, you know, attribute words to him about Islam being the best or better than other religions, but why he's a Muslim personally. Well, so we'll be getting his reasons. Should be very interesting to see what he has to say. Uh, before we get to that subject, however, you may have seen that there is a message pinned at the top of the chat about Rob from Sentinel Apologetics. He's been on this channel several times. Uh, he's joined numerous live streams and he's also been on as a official contributor. And he's encountered a situation where his father was battling cancer for the last several years. Obviously, they incurred a lot of medical bills. At, as a result of that, the, the family incurred a lot of medical bills. They sold the family house, and they thought they were in the clear. The amount of money that was generated from that sale was sufficient to meet what they knew of the medical bills. But then some uh, additional bills came in unexpectedly. And now, as a result, they've already sold that home. They uh, took out a, a loan to. Uh, you know, start to buy a property to build a new home on, and then they built a new home. And now, because they took out that loan, obviously they have to pay on it. And now they have these medical bills, and the medical providers are threatening to uh, try to foreclose on the home. So, a mutual friend of ours told me about this situation. And with Rob's permission, I have set up a fundraiser on his behalf. Let me go ahead and share my screen real quick for that. So obviously, uh, no one should feel obligated to contribute, but if you are desiring to do so, you can click the link at the top of the chat, or you, I'll put it in the pinned comment after we're done as well. Or you can go to givesendgo.com forward slash Sentinel Apologetics. And Apologetics is Rob's YouTube channel. So that's what I chose to name the campaign. Uh, Give, Send, Go, if you're not familiar with this company, is like a GoFundMe, uh, but it's a Christian organization. I don't even really want to say company because they don't uh, make any money off this. They provide the, the web hosting, obviously. They provide the credit card processing, but they don't take any cut of the donation other than the credit card processing fees. Uh, if you set up a campaign on GoFundMe, they take like 10% of the amount you raise uh, to, you know, support their company. So Give, Send, Go doesn't take any cut. Uh, if you go there and you do click the, the Give button, you will see that uh, they ask for an optional additional donation, which will go to their company as opposed to the, the campaign. It won't be counted as part of the campaign funds. When I did my donation, I added $1 to support the costs of running the website. But it's a nonprofit organization. And if you don't want them to get any money, you can you know select other and put $0. Uh, and then 100% of what you give minus what the credit card company takes, which is like 2.5%, 3%, will go to Rob's family. So uh, again, completely optional. Don't feel obligated to in any way, but if you feel inspired to help out, please do so. If you uh, are willing to pray for Rob, he greatly would appreciate that as well. Obviously, you don't have to go to the website to pray for Rob, but because this is a Christian organization, they do have a button that you can click to say that you are uh, providing prayers, and then you can, and when you click on that, you can type in a message. You can also leave a message with your donation, uh, and as you can see, you can donate anonymously. Uh, you don't even have to provide a screen name or anything, and you can leave an encouraging message for the family. Uh, so, thank you for your consideration on that. The minimum donation is seven dollars Australian, which works out to four dollars and sixty-three cents in US dollars. It just doesn't make sense for them to collect donations smaller than that because of the processing fees. It would just mostly go to the credit card company anyway. All right, 
So we will now get into today's agenda, starting with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. I thank you for the opportunity to speak freely with people who are not Christians, people who are Muslims or people who are members of other religions or adhere to no religion at all. Thank you that I'm living in a time and a space where this is a possibility because I know this hasn't always been the case in world history and it's not the case everywhere in the world today. As that you be with this discussion and that you help me illuminate the truth. I ask that you be with everyone who is watching and that you help them perceive the truth, that whatever is true about what I, either myself or Perfect Dawah says is remembered by people and applied to their lives. But anything that I said that is false or useless is simply forgotten because we all want to pursue the truth, or, or at least I want to pursue the truth. And I ask that you help other people pursue the truth as well. I ask that you be with me today on a personal level and that you give me the strength and wisdom to have a productive conversation today. I also ask for your blessings on Rob and his family as they face a difficult financial situation. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So why don't you take, you've been on the channel before, but why don't you take a couple minutes to introduce yourself before getting into, you know, any of your arguments for Islam or any of your reasons for Islam? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for this uh, opportunity, my brother. Um, yes, uh, I am a former atheist. Of course, I born in a Muslim family, but at the age of 25, I decided that God doesn't exist because of lack of knowledge. And then later, I realized that uh, I was wrong when I got uh, better knowledge of different things. So I converted to Islam <clears throat> and um, uh, my argument is that I didn't convert as a former atheist. I didn't convert to Islam because God exists or because Prophet Muhammad was a prophet of God. I converted to Islam because I didn't want to live in this uh, jungle, a modern jungle that we are living in. And we had now a case that you were talking about. Uh, a brother has such a difficulty because of, you know, some disease. And um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, this uh, unjust world, uh, there are so many uh, things happening in this world that uh, make it a, a real, real jungle. Uh, and we are living in this jungle. So I converted to Islam because I found the way out of this jungle in Islam. And I, I have to say that if I find a better way out of this jungle or even a, a, another way out of this jungle, I definitely convert to that another religion or another way because I just don't want to see all these unjust uh, things happening in this world, uh, killing and so on. In this jungle, the rules says that if you are strongest or stronger, you get most uh, and you are weak, you get little or nothing. And we see it uh, today very clear that 1% uh, of the world population, they own 50% of the total capital of the planet, which is $110 trillion, while hundreds of millions of people living on $1 a day or $2 a day. And some people like uh, our brother Rob, has not even enough money to spend on his father's, uh, you know, uh, disease. So while some people have so much money that their car collection is one billion dollars, just their car collection is. This is a terrible world. This is a very unjust world, and I want to change this world. Whoever, any religion that guide us out of this, uh, you know, jungle, I love it. I follow it. So I found this way out in Islam and I can prove it because God sent us prophets to not to, uh, you know, uh, take our attention to himself because he doesn't need us. He's almighty God. He has created the entire universe and we are nothing, nothing comparing to this universe. So he doesn't need my worship. He needs me to obey his commands because his commands guide me to a world where everybody else has it uh, has a, a you know fair uh, life, uh, so he tried to guide us to a better world and he succeed. 
uh, I always say in my uh, debates with atheists uh, as well that uh, look, uh, Romans and Greeks, they uh, were uh, living in such a barbaric way. They were crucifying people. They were putting gladiators in <clears throat> stadium, killing them. And Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, stop all those barbaric acts they were doing. So definitely uh, religion, God has created a better world for us. All we have today is thanks to religion, to God's commands. But do we have still uh, problems? Yes. Did God want to solve some problems? Not all of that. No, he wanted to solve all problems. Has he failed? No. It takes time. He waited. He waited billions of years until we reach here today. And it might take hundreds of years or thousands of years, but we will, in Quran, it says that we will one day reach that world, okay? The world where nobody is oppressed and nobody is oppressor. So, um, yes, I just uh, have to say that um, I converted uh, to Islam because um, he, uh, Islam, uh, you know, promoting uh, an equal world, a world where everybody share everything with each other. And I have been talking to my uh, uh, Christian brothers and sisters when I say about this and they say, oh, they have you believing that also it is Christianity. <laughs> so I'm very glad if uh, you also believe in such a world and want to get rid of this, uh, you know, uh, this uh, jungle world uh, with a, you know, a godly system the godly system is a system that he has given us everything that we share with each other, not like animals. We take the most and say, this is mine. I'm not going to give you anything. And we are ready to kill everybody uh, to, to, to gain more. So, um, yes, I have to say that if uh, Christians also believe in that, then we don't, sh we shouldn't have any problem with each other. We should have, have to, we should uh, work together, cooperate to reach that world. So I, I always say we should <clears throat> put aside our differences and uh, work on our <clears throat> common ground, yeah, common beliefs. And of course, uh, when it comes to uh, some extreme ideas like these extremist, uh, you know, Muslims, I am myself the biggest enemy of them. And I have been uh, trying to fight them. Uh, unfortunately, they blocked me. And yes, a few weeks ago, there was an atheist who uh, had a chat with me. He said that um, uh, I see that you are really working uh, against this uh, Muslim extremist. And he was, um, yeah, he realized that I'm not just uh, like some Muslim apologist who uh, show different face. Yeah, but in reality, they are <laughs> themselves. They believe in those, uh, you know, barbaric uh, beliefs. So, uh, yeah, and then even <clears throat> this uh, Nader was on my channel. I was trying to. Uh, yeah, he called me and I was trying to uh, debate him, but he refused because he, he said, I'm not going to <laughs> debate you. And uh, he ran away, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have, by the way, I have Christians who call on my channel every Saturday. We are there. And uh, yeah, we have very good relation. They are my brothers. Uh, my brother Martin from South Africa, he's even admin on my channel. He's a Christian. And uh, he, yes, we, we always have a good uh, relation with each other because I believe that we have to, uh, yes, we have to unite against our common enemies and our, uh, yes, uh, common problems. We have to, uh, uh, together, we have to uh, solve them. Uh, I think uh, if you want to ask about the jungle or the way out, so we, uh, we can talk more. Uh, so far, I think I have said, yeah, everything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so first of all, you have uh, a fan in, in the chat, uh, Masihi Muslim. Mm -hmm. Perfect Dawah is a nice person. His aim is to bring unity between all faiths that need to be supported or that 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 needs to be supported. So like bringing unity needs to be yes. supported. Mm -hmm. Thank is you. What he's trying to say. Yeah, thank you, um, Masihi <laughs> Muslim. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I certainly agree that the world would be a better place if, I, you know, to use the cliche, we all got along. <laughs> but I, at the same time, I, I don't want to, to compromise on truth, right? I, I don't want to say that, as is very common in the 
at least in, here in the United States and in the, you know, the leftist PC culture where it's like all ideas are equally valid. You know, the Hindu who wants to worship a hundred thousand different gods, the, no one has any right to say that that's any different than the Christian who wants to worship one God. So I think that, uh, you know, what you say, it sounds great. It sounds very good, right? Um, as you yourself pointed out, the Christians will tell you that Christianity teaches the same thing, that, that Christianity teaches equality. Uh, now, to be fair, not all religions teach that, right? Not all religions teach equality, uh, mm -hmm. but it is a fairly common idea. And even people who are not religious would often adhere to the this idea that we should all be equal. So I don't disagree with uh, a lot of what you said, right? And, you know, a lot of what you sound said sounds really good. And it sounds really great. You know, I reject those some of those, as you called them, extremist ideas. Now, unfortunately, in many respects, those ideas are Islam. Uh, which brings me to this comment from John Scott. Perfect Dawa seems like a nice guy, but he has his own version of Islam. So how would you respond to that? Someone who says, you're not a real Muslim. What you believe is kind of just a religion of your own creating that isn't the same thing as what Muhammad taught. All right. Uh, yeah, but uh, I have to say that, uh, first of all, I follow uh, an organization that has been fighting Iranian regime in uh, 44 years and all they started the fight was because this regime was going to oppress uh, non-Muslims especially. Of course, this regime was a mafia regime. So this organization has uh, millions of followers. So I'm not the only one. Uh, so it is not my only version. And uh, I have uh, other, uh, uh, you know, Muslim uh, brothers uh, like uh, Brother Rashid, I have been together with him on um, modern day debate. He also has, um, you know, good uh, beliefs. Uh, you know, the thing is that uh, I have said it many times that uh, if I was living in Afghanistan, uh, in a remote village of Afghanistan, most probably I would be also a Taliban. OK, so I had this opportunity to educate myself. So. Uh, so far, it has been like this. Unfortunately, people didn't have the uh, the right knowledge. They just relied on their imams, on their uh, scholars. So they couldn't themselves read and research. You know, there was no any internet. So they just followed the, blindly their imams and uh, scholars. So, but now is a time that is going to change. So the change has started. Um, uh, fortunately, 57 years ago, but. Uh, Unfortunately, the, the dark powers have tried to uh, to stop us. They, uh, you know, we have lost over 100,000 of our members and followers against Iranian regime. They have been executed or killed. So uh, yes, we, we are now, um, our my organization, they, they are in Albania and they, they are trying to bring down uh, Iranian regime. But unfortunately, there are, again, I say dark uh, forces that uh, want to keep this dark, uh, uh, you know, uh, or evil regime in power because they make a lot of money, you know, as long as there are uh, conflicts in the Middle East, they can sell their weapons, you know, they can buy cheap oil and, and so on. Just uh, last Friday, I can tell you, not this Friday, last Friday, Belgium released a terrorist who was going to uh, blow up thousands of people in uh, Paris in 2018. Many of them, they were uh, uh, American congressman, even uh, Rudy Giuliani, former mayor of uh, you know New York, was there. So this guy was he, he was an Iranian uh, uh, diplomat who was caught uh, before blowing up that that meeting, and hundreds of uh, you know uh, European parliamentarians were also there, and he got 20 year sentence. But just last Friday, they changed him with one hostage that Iranian regime had taken. Because unfortunately, these you know uh, uh, countries—I don't say just Western countries, Russia, China—they are all helping this evil regime. So if they allow us, if we change the uh, the regime in Iran, then you see that I am not alone. For example, I have to say uh, uh, that many years ago, 
We have, by the way, uh, a Muslim uh, woman who is leading our organization. And many years ago, one uh, Jordanian parliamentarian uh, met my leader and said that when you take the power in Iran, it's not just Iranian women who take, uh, you know, get their equal rights. The entire Middle East, they rise up the women and say, we also want our equal rights. So that's why, unfortunately, um, some powers who make a lot of money from this uh, situation in the Middle East, they don't want to see a moderate, uh, you know, a peaceful uh, region and a peaceful belief or Islam, maybe I can say, yeah, they don't want to see that, you know. So that's why they try to stop it. And uh, they are supporting uh, a, a ISIS, ISIS regime, I can say, yeah, the godfather of ISIS. They are supporting it because they make a lot of money. Yes, brother. Yeah, so I had, a, well, a couple comments. Uh, Hourglass fan said everybody has their own version, and Kagito and several others said something along the lines as you're mm -hmm. not answering the question. I actually think you did answer the question, but let me ask a different related question that I think is what people were wanting to hear, and, th and that is what makes someone a Muslim? Because you're saying, like, you know, these, these people following or, or supporting terrorism or violence mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, they're outside of what you would consider to be a Muslim. They would probably say the same thing about you. So what do you consider to be a Muslim? All right. OK, so <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, yes, uh, Muslim a Muslim is someone who submit to God's will, God's command. And I say even an atheist can be a Muslim when he is following God's command. He's doing good deeds and avoiding bad deeds, okay? Because God, all he wants is that you do good deeds and avoiding bad deeds. He even says that I forgive your minor bad deeds if you avoid major bad deeds. For in my eyes, a Christian, a Jew, uh, even an atheist, I said, who follow these commands, and I mean, even unknowing, you know, following the good commands and, uh, you know, is a loving person, that person is a Muslim, okay, because uh, it is he's doing exactly what God wants uh, from him. People might not know that God exists. People might not know that, uh, you know, for example, Islam or Prophet Muhammad was prophet of God. That's people make mistake, yeah, that, or misunderstand. But it doesn't necessarily mean that this person is a bad person. That's why he knows that. Prophet Muhammad was a prophet of God, but he's rejecting and he's rejecting his commands. No, some people maybe they are not convinced. So God says in Quran that the best of you is chapter 49, verse uh, 13, that says that the, uh, we have created you all equal, men, women. The best of you front of God is the one, uh, the most righteous one of you. So it, uh, God is talking uh, to mankind. He's not talking to Muslims. He's talking, he says, oh, mankind. So anybody who is the most righteous one is the best Muslim front of God. You know, it doesn't matter what you believe in. So I say, I always say that Mahatma Gandhi was a much better Muslim than uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, scholars who like in Iran now, they are robbing people, they are killing people. You know, he saved a lot of people uh, you know, Mahatma Gandhi. So he was a much better person in the sight of God than these so-called Muslims. Yeah. So uh, Master Roshi, who is a Muslim, said that a Muslim is one who doesn't cause harm to others and submits to one Allah, who is the creator of the universe. Uh, so you two seem to be saying something similar, that it's primarily about uh, doing good and that yes. it's primarily about avoiding evil and i would say that that's what every religion i mean if you're like excluding some like really unpopular occultist satanic type things mm -hmm. that's what basically any religion would tell you now they might slightly have slightly different definitions of what not causing harm or doing good is but they would all say that you know here's some rules this is what people should do so then again the question becomes why islam as opposed to mm -hmm. some other religion why do you think or why do you personally follow islam all right yes uh, as i explained uh, yeah of course uh, i i say um, that i have to say that uh, 
even those who uh, other religions uh, they learn from God's commands you know not necessarily from Islam from previous uh, prophets Jesus Moses and so on as and I explained that what was before them yeah so these uh, religions they started and uh, they started to teach people good deeds so people learn to to do good deeds and even they don't believe they realize that yes uh, our duty is to to do good deeds so it doesn't mean that um, uh, they are their message is from god but uh, they have gotten this uh, you know from other religions has gone to their religion uh, or uh, they created this religion but why islam is that as i said uh, uh, islam is going to uh, help us to get rid of all problems not some problems and i explained that uh, uh, islam christianity judaism they uh, helped us to get rid of many of our problems but do we still have problems today if if we can solve those problems ourselves i agree because um, i say that um, i'm a converted muslim and i'm not uh, you know following it blindly i say if we can solve it ourselves then okay we don't need islam we don't need any religion we don't need god but i believe that we cannot solve it ourselves uh, there are two ways okay there are two ways uh, in this world one is the jungle way which is the strongest get the most and the uh, weakest one get little or nothing another one is an equal world where everybody share everything with each other okay there is no rich no poor absolute equality so which religion can guide us to that world i have found it in islam and uh, the fact is that when i prostrate towards, towards mecca i prostrate towards equality i'm not prostrate uh, towards god i'm not worshiping god God wants me to prostrate towards equality. What is equality is what happening in Mecca. We go there dress equally, no rich, no poor. The material is also decided. It is cotton material. You cannot design it and so on. So nobody should be recognized as a poor or rich in Mecca. So we say to God, I accept it. And then when we say I accept it, we reject the opposite of the equality, which is inequality. And I call it today capitalist system. OK, so we reject the capitalist system that allows one percent of the world population to own one hundred ten trillion dollars, allows them and allows them, encourages them to kill millions of people to gain so much money. Tobacco companies they get billionaires by killing 5 million people every year on this planet. Can you imagine, brother, 5 million people every year? And this system allows them, encourages them to do that. These so-called scholars in Iran, the capitalist system allows them to kill millions of people to become billionaires. The, uh, you know, the leader Ayatollah Khamenei, now he is a, a devil who is sitting there. He didn't have even a flat himself. He was renting before revolution. Now he's $200 billion rich. So this system allows these evil people to become rich by killing other people in any way. So this system is a satanic system. And I believe that Satan is nothing, is, is nothing but this system. And God wants us to get rid of this satanic system and uh, establish godly system, which is equality. And we share everything with each other. It is called in Islam Mahdi society, okay? The Mahdi society. But I don't believe that Mahdi will come and save us. I believe that we are ourselves Mahdi. We have gotten the the instruction. We have gotten the you know the the map. But it is we who must walk out of this uh, jungle. So God is not going to carry us out. If He was going to do that, He would do have done it two thousand years ago, five thousand years ago. He wouldn't wait so long time. He waited so that we develop and we learn ourselves that yes, this is the problem and this we have to get rid of it. And all together, we have to fight for that equal world and get rid of this evil system. I hope that I explained it, my brother. Yes, yeah, so I have uh, some follow up questions. First, just this comment from Chaldean. Mm -hmm. This is for me. Why does this silly Christian bring this Muslim on here? When the Christian doesn't know how to refute the garbage of Islam, this Christian is pathetic. I asked him why he says that. Is it just because I'm letting you talk? Because, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, 
I, I definitely know how to refute Islam, but he didn't answer. So I guess he was only interested in uh, have and watching someone yell at someone else. And I'm interested in having conversation. If people don't want to watch a conversation, then yes. you don't need to watch this channel. You can watch some other channel that yells at people that, if that's what you want to see. But that's not what you'll find here, uh, at least not when there's no reason to. If someone comes, when I have an open call-in show, if someone comes in and they, they start being rude and, and name-calling, then I will be more aggressive with them. But if someone comes on and they have a perfectly reasonable, nice conversation, I want to have a conversation that leads to the truth. And this actually ties into, you know, these accusations of not being a real Muslim, not representing Islam uh, properly, whatever. I, I don't care, right? It, it, I want to talk to individuals. I, I'm not here to win an argument, right? I'm not here to demonstrate that I'm strong and, and, and I'm great and I'm deserving support or whatever. I'm here to win hearts and minds. And how that is actually done is by conversation. You're not going to win people over by yelling at them. You might impress the audience, right? You you might uh, win a lot of support, a lot of yay our side by being uh, yelling at one another. And there is a time and place for that. But when someone's being reasonable and having a legitimate conversation is not that time. Yes. Uh, so I do. Yeah, sorry, I have to say that unfortunately some people would like just, uh, you know, they don't like to uh, love one another, which Jesus, peace be upon him, said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's not love when you, you know, insulting people. I cannot say that I love my neighbor when I go and yelling at him, why are you believing Jesus? Oh, you are, your religion is crazy and so on. That's not love, okay? Love is as long as, yes, your neighbor is peaceful, your neighbor is respecting you, you also respect your neighbor, that's, that's, that's love, okay? So first you have to learn Christianity and then try to, you know, to say that you are Christian because this is very strong, love one another, you have to understand what that means, okay? Yeah, sorry, brother. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. So a uh, pointed question here um, from Pavla. How does Islam solve problems when most of the Islamic countries have a ton of problems? So you're talking about how you think that Islam is the best solution to the yes. world's problems. And when we look at the world, we see problems everywhere. I'm not saying yeah. it's like exclusive to Islamic countries, yeah, but yeah. we see an equal amount of problems in Islamic countries. And indeed, you've pointed out some of those yourself. So how can you okay. look at the, the data and say Islam is the solution? Yeah, thank you. It's a good question. And I have been addressing this many times that uh, uh, I said from beginning that the, the satanic system is ruling the world, including Islamic, so-called Islamic countries. That system allows people to gain billions of dollars by, you know, oppressing people. And that's happening even in Islamic, so-called Islamic countries. That's why we have revolutions. The Arab Spring was because a bunch of rulers they were uh, you know oppressing people and um, if uh, I, I i'm sorry that i have to say this is this is data this is a reality that somebody might not like it but in 1951 uh, uh, in iran we chose a democratic uh, you know prime minister he his name was uh, dr Mossadegh, and uk was taking our oil uh, free and he nationalized our oil but USA and UK together made a coup d'etat against him in 1953. This is documented. You can check it. Uh, even the documents were released by CIA that how they brought out, uh, down that prime minister. And they put a dictator called Shah in power. 27 years they were supporting that dictator. When we made a revolution against that dictator, they brought for us Ayatollah fascist Khomeini in power because Khomeini was a better alternative to democratic alternatives which we had. They were left groups, of course, uh, because after the revolution, uh, USA and the West, they were thinking that uh, if the left groups take the power, then they will join Soviet Union. That's why they helped Khomeini, this ISIS guy, to take the power. And still, I explain for you 44 years they are supporting this evil government because this evil government is creating chaos in the middle east and they can sell their weapons obama sold three times 
a weapon more than George Bush, three times more, and he got Nobel Prize. Despite he sold three times more than George Bush. Why? Because he was creating conflict in the Middle East, and that's why it's happening there. If uh, after if there was no that uh, coup d'état in 1953, we would have another Japan in in you know Iran. We would have a beautiful country. If at least after the revolution in 1979, if they didn't support this ISIS guy to take the power, because they were afraid of Soviet Union, then we would have a democratic government in Iran, and that democracy would spread in the Middle East, okay? So, but instead of that, war has spread in the Middle East, Iran-Iraq war, this, uh, what's happening in Syria, Iran has 70,000 troops in Syria, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Yemen war, all this is because of a satanic and mafia government in power. So please don't uh, you have to know politics as well. Don't put this chaos on Islam. This chaos is because of those powers want to, even Russia and China, I told you, is not just the West. Even Russia, China, North Korea, all of them support this evil regime because they get a lot of money from this evil regime. Yes, brother. Yes. So uh, the history there, uh, I will dispute slightly uh, what you said about the rev or the the overthrowing of the the government and instilling the shah that was correct uh, that's completely correct but i don't think that the west supports the government that that is in place now uh, that, that this explicitly anti-western government um the revolution was anti-american right and then since then there they've been cut off from the rest of the world. Now, you could say that some of the problems in Iran are due to being cut off, but I don't think you can say that the capitalist West is supporting Iran and, and propping them up. I, I think that that's a very inaccurate description of what is going on there. But regardless can I, can of that- Can I share something, my brother? Sure. Okay, uh, you can talk now. I, I will find it and I uh, share it with you then. Okay, so far you can talk, my brother. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, so while you're looking that up, I'll, I'll take another one of the comments from the audience. This one from Master of Darkness. There's no good reason to believe any of this stuff based on the comment and the thumbnail and the username. I'm assuming they're probably an atheist and they probably aren't still watching, but in the event that Master of Darkness is still watching, there are many good reasons to believe in the truth of a, a generic God. And then there are many separate reasons to believe in the truth of Christianity. I would be happy to discuss any of that stuff with you at any time you like, you can email me at Thaddeus at reasonedanswers.com if you're interested in that discussion, but not have really the topic. Something? Have uh, I shared today. something? Sorry. Yep. Did, I, did I share something because I clicked on that share? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. here is. All right, I see. So this is a, uh, you know, this is a camp uh, which I was talking. Now they are in Albania. And there are nearly 3,000 men and women are uh, fighting the Iranian regime. They were in Iraq. And by the way, uh, women are equal in our organization. The, uh, the organization is called People's Mujahideen Organization of Iran. So they are fighting for people. The, that's why they are called People's Mujahideen. And this organization, they had a, a strong army in Iraq, which was in 2003 when U.S. and U.K. occupied I Iraq. Uh, there was a uh, uh, for, 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 for foreign minister UK foreign minister, his name was Jack Straw. Jack Straw, uh, you know, he was a lover of Iranian regime and he was a corrupted man. He was kicked out of the parliament a uh, few years ago because of corruption. And that Jack Straw helped uh, uh, persuade George Bush to bomb this organization in Iraq. And they tried to destroy this organization. And this organization is the biggest enemy of Iranian regime. Let me now, uh, you have seen it, um, I think um, is enough, yes. So this organization uh, is the biggest enemy of Iranian regime. And uh, unfortunately, uh, instead of getting support from the West, they bombed them, they tried to destroy them. And uh, 
uh, hundreds of the, their members were killed and they are absolutely democratic. And now uh, even Mike Pence, Mike Pence, over 108, uh, you know, uh, leaders of the West, few days ago, they supported this organization and they said that we believe this organization, even Mike Pence, uh, you know, Mike Pence was uh, uh, Trump's, yes, uh, vice pre uh, president, and he has been supporting our organization. Unfortunately, in the past, there was no such a support yet. Uh, uh, they were, but not so strong. And uh, unfortunately, some powers like European countries, like uh, uh, Biden uh, administration, they want to help this regime. And I said that they just few days uh, last week they released a terrorist and um, uh, biden is trying to release seven billion dollars that uh, uh, trump blocked i said the only one the only one who really stood against the iranian regime was donald trump no one else in all these 44 years he killed uh, the biggest terrorist on the planet uh, qasem soleimani you know and he was really putting uh, a lot of pressure on this regime uh, the sale of oil was uh, nearly 800,000 barrel a day at uh, that time. Now it's two and a half million barrel because Biden want to keep this government in power and they are going to release seven billion dollars that is blocked in South Korea uh, because uh, to release just two, three uh, hostages, American hostages uh, in Iraq. So unfortunately, uh, you have to go and read a little bit more and see that how they this i don't say all of them but this globalist the globalists who brought down the trump as well they want to keep this chaos in the middle east they don't want this regime fall that's why because as i said they sell a lot of weapons there they buy cheap oil and so on so this is uh, this was the fact that i showed you that this organization was in iraq and they were forced to move to Albania, they could bring down the Iranian regime within a few months. And they are asking, uh, Todos, they are asking to give us the right to fight the Iranian regime, but still they don't give the right uh, that they fight the regime in Iraq, unfortunately. Yes. Yes, I have uh, several comments here mm -hmm. uh, from Too Many Marys. What does this have to do with the truth of Islam from KC? Mm -hmm. uh, Perfect Dawah talks about the same things, whatever she has done. He dodges defending Islam, and okay. Can uh, I answer? One more, what? Yeah. Well, one more. They're all on the same line, so I want to get all three of them okay. up here. Yes. I think this is the best uh, one to respond to. Perfect Dawah is just an Iranian political activist, but when he tries to ignore, support the problems in Islam, it makes him more dangerous than the radicals. And so I, feel, so support, I, wanna, sorry, I wanna say what? I, I didn't understand. I, I ignore what? Ignore support. Uh, ignore or support the problems in Islam. Okay. Uh, so I want to make one quick comment. Uh, I I very much feel for the Iranian people. I, I think that it's a very beautiful people. They have a proud heritage, and uh, I definitely support the current protests, the current efforts to overthrow the regime. I think that the world would be a better place if the United States had decided to ally with Iran instead of Saudi Arabia. I think that the United States makes a terrible uh, choice in saying and ignoring all the all the human rights abuses of Saudi Arabia in the the name of peace in the region and ultimately about oil. So I definitely do not support American politics, but. I do want to get back to, to Islam here, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, you're telling me a lot about the problems in Iran, and I agree. I, I agree that there is a horrible political situation there. I agree that the people are oppressed. I'm very glad that there are organizations fighting against these things. But we're, in theory, we're talking about the truth of Islam here. So right. uh, I'll give you a chance to respond. All right. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, because it came up, they asked, they said that why uh, Islamic countries is like this. So I should explain. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, somebody said that I ignore uh, the problems in Islam. So we can talk about the problems in Islam. If I ignore them, you should just pick up one of the problems, then I will, uh, you know, address that. And I explained that why Islam. I said that I found uh, the problem of uh, the humanity in uh, the satanic system, which I mentioned that it is 
the system that allows people to get richer by killing uh, other people, by producing a cigarette and kill 5 million people because they get rich and so on. I explained that, yeah. Uh, and I found the, the solution in Islam because Islam wants us to live equal. equal and I said that uh, Mecca is the symbol of that. That's why I'm prostrating towards equality. I'm not prostrating towards uh, a wall or God or whatever. This is our understanding, my organization, and I understand that one as well, that we have to live equal and we have to get rid of the satanic system. So this is, uh, uh, and now if somebody can uh, bring up those uh, problems in Islam, mm -hmm. uh, we, and then I would uh, be more than glad to talk about them. Yes. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I do have a number of comments <laughs> from yeah. people wanting to talk about problems in Islam. So that, yes, that will yes. not be a, a, a problem. But first, um, for Masi Muslim, would Perfect Dawah support scrapping all violent verses from the Quran? Okay. The thing is that, yes, the um, violence versus is like, uh, you know, fighting, yeah, fighting uh, the kuffar. First of all, we have to know who is kuffar. Kuffar uh, are not disbelievers. Kuffar are those who oppress, those who are doing bad deeds. Kuff, in reality, is rejecting. Rejecting what? Rejecting God's commands. God's commands was uh, doing good deeds, loving one another, not oppressing each other, and so on. So those who reject these commands and they go against it and they oppress other people, so God allows us to fight them. And it is as long as they fight. When they stop fighting, we have we have to fight, uh, stop fighting too, because Allah does not like those who uh, transgress, those who continue to fight. And these verses will be scrapped off in that equal world. As long as we are living in this satanic world, these verses are now for, uh, I say, for Ukrainian people. Ukrainian people have the right to fight Russians. We have the right to fight Iranian regime. So these verses are for such a situation, is not for Swedish people, for example, that are uh, living in peace. It is just for those who are attacked and they have the right to defend themselves. So if you bring a verse, I can, you know, I can discuss that verse. If you want, I can bring the verses that goes against fighting those who do not fight you. Uh, would you like me to read for you those verses? Uh, well, uh, so uh, you can read those, but uh, since you asked for a verse, obviously, sir, 929, fight those who believe who believe who believe not in a law in the last days and uh, and then verses 30 and 31 okay. they explain that Jews and Christians have gone to excess it seems to be that the reason for fighting according to the Quran is that yes. they believe in an incorrect religion it doesn't seem to have anything to do with defending yourself or any of the other things that yes. you said can you bring it up brother brother 29 uh, sorry uh, 929 can you please bring it up Yep, so yep. Can, give me, can give me just through. one second I, yes, yes. To, to put the words on the screen. Yeah. And that's, that's my bad. I probably should have had the, the window open in advance. No so I problem. Could just the verse, but... <laughs> it's okay, no problem. I have time, don't worry. <laughs> if, if, the, if people are patient, then it's good. <laughs> All right, so we got uh, starting at verse 28 here. So, oh, you who believed, indeed, the polytheists are unclean. So let yeah, because them we not... don't see it. Sorry, sorry, we don't see oh, it. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I shared it, but I, but I didn't add it to the stream. So All then, right, yes. Yep, yep, amateur hour. Uh, oh, you who have believed, indeed, the polytheists are unclean. I'm sorry, I don't know if I, uh, it's just me because it's black. Maybe uh, I have to check YouTube oh, as well. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, let's. You have it with the Arabic version also. Yeah. So. Let me, let me try again. Mm -hmm. No problem. Or else you want me to find it and share it. <clears throat> Uh, I think maybe what is happening. Yeah, it's sharing. Everybody, nobody sees it. It's black. Yeah, yeah, they they definitely don't. Okay. 
So here's what I'm going to have to do. Maybe I should. Uh, it's fine. I know what the problem was. So oh, there you go. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, if you bring it a little bit down so that uh, we see the Arabic also. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right. Yes. <clears throat> so it says in Arabic, Yamanu. Uh, yeah. Those uh, in reality is not believing. It's uh, faith is not believing. It says because no Christian and no Jew can say this is about Christian and Jews. Okay. It says the people of the book. Okay. Those who do not have faith in God and the last day, because not a single Christian or Jew can say, I'm a Jew, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in the last day and I don't believe in God. Okay. So, and then it continues and says that, uh, and do not forbid what has been forbidden by a uh, prophet. Uh, you know, it says, let me uh, read it. So when you go a little bit for the brother, uh, uh, Theodos, go to 34. Uh, yeah, verse... yeah I, I can certainly yeah. continue on, but let yes, me, yes. yeah. We'll, so we'll yeah. start at 29 yes. and, and yeah, then true. we'll read down. Yes, yes. okay. So, so uh, uh, let, let, me, let me explain it. It is saying that they don't have faith. They believe in God and the last day, but they don't have faith and they don't forbid, forbid something, okay? There is something that they don't forbid. And if you go to number 34, Allah explained what is that they don't forbid. Uh, it is some people, some of the monks, and if you just go to 34, I will explain for you, because this is absolutely not about all Christian and Jews, okay? It's about some of them, and I, uh, I, have, I have to say that in chapter 3, verse 7, uh, God says that the true meaning of the unspecific verses is known only by Allah and those firm in knowledge. So what those firm in knowledge do is that they put these verses beside other verses of Quran and they take the real interpretation of the verse. Then chapter 60 verse 8 says that Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Chapter 3 verse 113, not all of them are alike. Of the people of the book are a person that stand for the right. They rehearse the verse of God all night long and they prostrate themselves in adoration. Next verse, they believe in God and the last day they enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. And they hasten in emulation in all good works. They are in the rank of uh, the righteous. Next verse, and whatever good they do, never will be uh, it removed from them. And Allah is knowing of all righteous. And there are many other verses. So when you put this verse beside those verses, you understand that Allah does not forbid me from being righteous towards you, my brother, righteous towards those good and Christian and Jews. So here Allah says, fight Iranian regime, for example, even it's not about just Christian and Jews. Those who avert people from the path of God by, uh, if you go to number 34, I will explain for you why, who are they? Okay. okay, so I, I I salute you for trying to to reinterpret this in, in a positive light, but okay. we can't just skip straight from 29 to 34. I will I will read 34, but I, okay. we need to read the verses in between. All right, yes, okay, well. yes, yes. Uh, fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day, mm -hmm. and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and His Messenger have made unlawful, and do not mm -hmm. adopt the religion of truth from those who are given the Scripture until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. Okay. So uh, so it says, you know, don't adopt your religion from those who are given the scripture until they pay the jizya. So Jews and Christians, the people of the book have to pay the jizya. Then it goes on to verse 30 is going to explain why this is the case. It says the Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah and the Christians say Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statement from their mouths. They, in, they imitate the saying of those who disbelieved. May Allah destroy them. How are they deluded? Now, uh, Jews today, or any time in history for that matter, do not say that Ezra is the son of Allah. But Christians certainly say that Messiah, Jesus, is the son of God. Okay. So this reason for fighting, right? The reason for fighting Christians is, is because they have made this error of saying the Messiah 
is the son of Allah. And then it goes on to continue the error of what the Jews and Christians have done. They have taken their scholars and monks as lords besides Allah and the Messiah, the son of Mary. And they were not commanded except to worship one God. There is no deity except him. Exalted is he above whatever they associate with him. So the secondary, so the first reason is that they say, we'll just stick just to Christians here, that Christians say that Jesus is the son of God. And the second reason is that Christians elevate scholars and monks to the status of lords. Now, Christians mm-hmm. don't do that. Uh, at least, maybe individual Christians at some point have. So you could say that Christians don't still do this, right? You could say that they're not failing that criteria, but we're certainly failing this criteria, which is the reason to fight according to the Quran. So then continuing on, they went to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah refuses except to perfect his light, although the disbelievers dislike it. So we're extinguishing the light of Allah by saying that uh, Jesus is the son of God and taking our scholars as lords, which ironically, right, taking scholars as being authoritative is exactly what Islam ended up doing. It is he who has sent his messenger with guidance in the religion of truth to manifest it over all religion, although they associate others with Allah, dislike it. Then we come to the verse you wanted us to believe. O you who have believed, indeed, many of the scholars and the monks devour the wealth of people unjustly and avert from the way of Allah. And those who hoard gold and silver and spend it not in the way of Allah give them tidings of a painful punishment. So this verse indeed says that those who are misusing wealth for their own benefit uh, also deserve punishment, but it, it doesn't invalidate what you know verse 30 gave as a reason so there's multiple reasons why someone might that why muslims have to fight against people one of them is as you say in verse 34 that people are misusing wealth and treating people unfairly and i don't disagree with that but the the reason in verse 30 is entirely theological has nothing to do with people's actions it has to do with their beliefs all right may may i now uh, respond Yes, actually, uh, if you take just that verse, of course, you might end up to think that, uh, believe that, yes, we have to fight uh, Christian and Jews like this uh, uh, ISIS scholar, <laughs> I call him, the guy who was saying, I don't know if uh, his name was, uh, his name is uh, uh, Asim or something like that. Have you seen that guy who say we give you two good options and if you don't follow oh, yes, me, yes. yeah, yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. So if you just read that one, maybe you end up like that. But when you read other verses, which I said that in chapter three, verse seven says they are, these such a verses are unspecific verses and only Allah and those firm in knowledge understand them. How those firm in knowledge understand them, they put it beside chapter 60, verse eight and other verses as well that Allah says that you, he doesn't give us the right to fight those who do not fight us, okay, to be righteous to ourselves. And in chapter, uh, sorry, verse 34, which I told you is that, oh, you who believe, indeed, many of the scholars and the monks uh, devour the wealth of people unjustly and avert them from the way of Allah. Okay, Allah here is not uh, Islamic God, is the God, yeah, the creator. So it is exactly like Iranian regime, uh, the scholars, they have been robbing people and have, uh, I, I think you had a video as well, and have forced millions of Iranians out of Islam as well. And the priest, uh, Christian priest, uh, sorry, priest in the Renaissance time, when they were doing all those unjust, uh, you know, terrible uh, deeds against people in Europe, they also pushed millions of European out of Christianity. This is why we have to fight such a people. And Jazia is not that you have to pay. It is what they have been consuming from people's wealth. And we have to take it and give it back to the to the people. So as I said, if you take one verse of Quran, you might yes end up to say, oh, it is violent. But when you put them together with other verses of Quran, then you see that as a Muslim, I have no right to fight those who do not fight me. Even fighting is as the last option. Is it? It is not the first option. I have to try to work peacefully because Allah does not like those who, uh, you know, oppress people, those who 
uh, attack innocent people and so on. So this is, uh, yes, uh, the reason that we have to put them beside other verses, uh, either it is contradiction or it is something that unfortunately you do not understand. So because I, I cannot say that I, I followed chapter 9, 29, but I don't follow chapter 60, verse 8. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes. For being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them, indeed Allah loves those who act justly. So I cannot reject this because in chapter 3, verse 7 says, those firm in knowledge say, we follow all of them. Okay, but those whose heart is corrupted, they follow only those which are unspecific, desiring, uh, you know, a wrong interpretation. If you check chapter three, verse seven, you will see what Allah says. <clears throat> so those few in knowledge, they follow all of them, not just few of, uh, of the verses. Yes, brother. Yes. So uh, you, you raised a possibility, right, that it might just be a uh, contradiction. And I do want to point out that all of Surah 9 is about fighting. It's not just this one verse. Like the, the entirety of the chapter is about uh, Muslims being given permission to fight. Uh, and of course, verse 5 is called the verse of the sword because it's the exact moment where Muslims are given the permission to fight where they have previously been told not to. Mm -hmm. So there are verses in the Quran that are revealed before this time that tell the Muslims not to fight. And this is the standard Islamic historical interpretation of the Quran, right? Like they, the peaceful verses, verses like those that you recited are revealed first when Muhammad has a very small following. And then at this one particular moment in time when 9-5 is revealed, uh, when the sacred months have passed, they kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. But if you should, if they should repent, establish prayer and give zakah, let them on their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. So again, it, the sacred months are when you're forbidden from fighting by the culture of seventh century Arabia, all people, whether you're Muslims or you're non-Muslims, everyone is forbidden for fighting. So Allah says, when that time of waiting, right, when, when the current sacred months that are going on right now have passed, now you need to start waging war on the polytheists. You need to kill them wherever you find them. It doesn't say defend yourself when they attack you. It says kill them wherever you find them. Capture them, besiege them, sit and wait for them sit back like hiding and when they walk by jump out and attack them i it, it's incompatible with the peaceful verses so one possibility is that there's just a contradiction as you pointed out another possibility is what muslims have typically said is that abrogation that those verses were revealed but then they were abrogated and they no longer apply today and what you're going to say is that these verses aren't clear and the other ones are clear but frankly, they're all perfectly clear. The, the ones you cited are perfectly clear about being peaceful. And these ones are perfectly clear about waging offensive war. So there's a conflict here. And I will uh, say that the other way that Muslims have historically resolved this is to say that it's situational. Some situations you have to use your judgment and you know, be peaceful. Other situations, you have to use your judgment and say that enough is enough. It's time to go on the attack. So I'll let you respond. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I was uh, looking for the verses uh, because I have had verses about fighting uh, that Allah says, uh, even in these verses, it says that uh, you have to fight them because they don't let you alone. Okay. I cannot find it now. Uh, because Allah says there that they, uh, whenever you, whenever you make a treaty with them, they break it. Okay, so all of this is uh, during the war, and we know after, <clears throat> even after Prophet Muhammad, uh, you know, conquered uh, Mecca uh, in the last day, he forgave everybody. He didn't, uh, you know, order to killing even the biggest enemy of Islam, Abu Sufyan. And uh, <clears throat> it says clearly in Quran that fight as long as they fight. Uh, let me uh, find the verses. Um, let please. Uh, 
Africa, Quran about fighting. Yes. Uh, yeah, it says in chapter 8, verse 61 says, and if they incline to peace, then incline to it and rely upon Allah. Indeed, it is he who is the hearing, the known. Chapter 2, verse 190, fight in the cause of Allah only against those who wage war against you, but do not exceed the limits. Allah does not like transgressor. Chapter 2, verse 191, and kill them wherever you uh, overtake them and expel them from wherever they have expelled you. And oppression, uh, uh, sorry, oppression is worse than killing. And do not fight them at all uh, at, at Masjid Haram until they fight you there. But if they fight you, then kill them. S uh, such is the uh, recompense of the kofar. Next verse. And if they cease, then indeed Allah is forgiving and merciful. Next verse, fight them until there is no oppression and until all worship is devoted only for uh, to Allah. But if they cease, then there is uh, to be no aggression against, uh, except against the oppressors. So all these verses, there are many other verses. I don't want to take uh, a lot of time. All these verses teaches me that I have to fight those who oppress me. I have no right to fight you, my brother. I have no right to fight any peaceful person on this planet. So uh, you can interpret it how you want it. <laughs> and I don't force you, no problem. But uh, I uh, you know, promote such interpretation that yes, we have the right to fight against uh, you know, ISIS, Taliban, Iranian regime, um, Russia has uh, occupied Ukraine, all oppressors, you know, but we have no right to fight peaceful people. That's my belief, and I uh, promote that one. So, yes, of course, some people want to promote uh, violence or so on. That's, that's their problem, and their judgment is with God. It's not with me, okay? I just say that that's uh, not correct. Correct is that we have no right to, there is no compulsion in religion, okay? That's very clear in Quran, that I have no right to force you on anything. I, except if you oppress me, I have the right to defend myself. Yes, brother. Yes, so again, I agree that there are verses that clearly are against violence. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't dispute that you're correct, that there are verses that, that say this. And I would just suggest to you that maybe you should consider that there's actually a contradiction here, right? That the, the Quran actually teaches different things, whether you accept the historical reasoning that, uh, you know, it's abrogation or not, there does seem to be a contradiction. Uh, before we move on, I did want to bring up one other thing here. Um, yes. Let me share my screen. Let's see, oh, there we go again Again's with the life. broken screen share. <laughs> no yes. problem. Now that I know, now I know, I, I know how to fix it. There we go. All right. So, uh, you you said that Jews and Christians wouldn't be counted as the non-believer, but here mm -hmm. in uh, 150 and following, maybe I should have put it in like five verses or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to clearly teach that they are. Uh, mm -hmm. Indeed, those who disbelieve in Allah and his messengers and who wish to discriminate between Allah and his messengers and say we believe in some and disbelieve in others and wish to adopt a way in between, those are disbelievers truly. We have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment. Mm -hmm. But they who believe in Allah and his messengers and do not discriminate between any of them to those he is going to give rewards, the ever is Allah forgiving and merciful and so on. Now. Jews and Christians uh, don't believe that Muhammad is a messenger. We definitely do not treat him the same as other people. And Christians don't treat Jesus the same as any other prophet. This verse agrees with what we saw in Surah 9, that Christians are in air and they are considered among the disbelievers and Allah will punish them for that. Uh, so this isn't directly, so this is a, 
related but different line here, right? Because you're saying two things. You're saying that Allah doesn't prescribe violence, but you're also saying that Allah views, according to the Quran, right? It views Jews and Christians as on equal standing with Muslims, and that doesn't seem to be the case. All right. Um, yes. Uh, as I said uh, again, if uh, you bring one verse and then you avoid uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 7 says that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I told us, I don't want to, let me bring that uh, verse. I, I, I can bring it up, no problem. 3, three, three 7. 3, 7. I just have to uh, bring it myself uh, and read it from my translation, okay? Mm -hmm, that's fine. It says this, it says that, <clears throat> it is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book, which is Quran, in it are verses that are precise, they are the foundation of the book, and others unspecific. As for those whose heart is corrupted, they will follow that of it which is unspecific, desiring to create confusion and their own interpretation. I'm not saying that you are doing that. I'm, for, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, my brother. No, no, no. Not, no that, yes, that's yes, fine. I, I, no, no. But there are it, people. I, I am fine. Yes, yes. Just, but to, be clear, people, just to be yes. clear, I'm yes. fine with you telling me I'm wrong because no, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no, interested yes. in the truth of the matter. Yes. And you can't tell someone that they, they, they're they seeing something incorrectly, yes. or, which is a very loving thing to do, to tell someone that they have the incorrect religion. You can't do yes. that. And mm -hmm. without telling them they're wrong. So I have no problem with you or anyone no. else telling me yes. they're wrong if they bring good arguments. No, but I'm just saying that uh, I'm not saying that your heart is corrupted, but there are people whose heart is corrupted. Like Ayatollah Fascist Khomeini, he just uh, used that type of verses and says that uh, we have to kill others. But there were scholars also in Iran who went against him and said that, no, these are wrong. You are absolutely wrong. So you just put aside all those beautiful verses, you know, peace, peaceful verses, loving verses, and you just take some verses that is, uh, you know, for a specific time in a time that is right. So anyway, it says that they will follow that of it, which is unspecific, desire to create confusion and their own interpretation. And no one knows its true interpretation except Allah and those firm in knowledge. And they say, who says those firm in knowledge? We believe in it. All of it is from our Lord. And no one uh, will be reminded except those who uh, those of understanding. So <clears throat> we say all of it are from our Lord. Is not just one verse or two verses. That's why when we go to chapter uh, that verses, uh, let me bring it up. Okay, when we go to chapter three, verse one hundred thirteen, and God says clearly, not all of them are alike. Of the people of the book are a portion that stand. For the right, they rehearse the verse of God all night long, and they prostrate themselves again, uh, you know, uh, prostrate themselves in adoration. Next verse, they believe, I, I read all these verses for you, and I can read uh, other verses as well. Chapter 5, verse 83, and when they listen to the revelation received by the messenger, you will see their eyes uh, overflowing uh, with tears. Uh, for they rec recognize the truth. They pray, O oh Lord, we believe, write us down among the uh, witnesses. Chapter 7, verse 159. Of the people of Moses, there is a section who guide and do justice in the uh, light of the truth. There are so many verses. Chapter 29, verse 46. And do not argue with the people of the scripture except in the way that is best except for those who commit injustice among them and say, we believe in, the, in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you, and our God is your God, uh, is, uh, sorry, and, and our God and your God is one, and we are Muslims sub, in submission to him. So there are many verses that I say that all of them are from my Lord and I f follow all of them. So I put them beside each other and I realize that I have no right you are not going to be punished just because of your belief. Quran says for, uh, to me that people are going to punish for their action. ISIS, Taliban, they say that they are Muslim, but they are going to punish. And, um, and I said from beginning, even uh, uh, a pagan like um, Mahatma Gandhi will be a reward for what he did for, for people. 
So you get reward for your good deeds, not for your uh, thoughts or your beliefs. You get uh, punished for your bad deeds, my brother. Okay. So uh, again, the, there's multiple possibilities here, right? You, you're appealing to three seven, saying that some verses are clear and some are unclear. But to me, uh, both of these ver are all of these verses are equally clear, and the, most of the verses you cited about Jews and Christians who are all right, then then Allah doesn't have a problem with. In context, there's about Jews and Christians who accept Muhammad as a messenger, that they accept him as the new prophet, and that they're becoming Muslim. So of course, Allah doesn't have a problem with them. But I would say that 4150 is perfectly clear as well, that whoever doesn't uh, believe in Muhammad is rejected by Allah and Muslims are to fight against them, that uh, they, they are deserving of punishment. So I, I think that the just saying that some verses are unclear doesn't really get around this. Uh, you know, I, I salute you personally for not believing in these things, but historically, Muslims have, if you look at the earliest tafsirs, they all thought that fighting was commanded in the name of Islam. If you look at all of the scholars of Sharia before modern times, they all agreed that offensive war was permitted by Allah. The only disagreement was the exact circumstances in which it was permitted. So it seems to me that people are reading the Quran and they're finding it perfectly clear that it was commanding offensive war against Jews and Christians because they had done things that caused them to reject the truth of what Allah had brought, and thus it was up to the Muslims to restore them to the true position. All right. Okay, um, my brother, I said that uh, when you put, the, I didn't say that it is unclear, maybe I said when you put them beside other verses, then you get it clear, and Allah says that those uh, whose heart is corrupted, they follow just one verse or two verse. These verses, they don't follow those verses. When I want to follow all of it, then I see that, okay, I cannot fight those who do not fight me because Allah says in chapter 60, verse 8, that I cannot fight Theodos, my brother, Christian brother, that is not fighting me. He's, he's talking to me, okay? And Allah says in, uh, uh, which verse was it, that I have to talk to you in the best uh, way. It was chapter 29 verse 46 that I have to talk to you in a best way. So I put all verses as chapter 3 verse 7 says, I say I follow all of them, not just one verse or two verse that says that I have to, you know, fight people. And those fighting, I said, is just for the time that I get attacked. It is for even Ukrainian people. They have the right to fight uh, Russian uh, occupation. I hope that uh, it is clear, my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it is definitely clear the way that you're interpreting the Quran. Uh, it's quite clear that you are against any kind of offensive, uh, trying to bring people into Islam or trying to offensively destroy mm -hmm. people who are unbelievers or anything like that. That is perfectly clear. Uh, and I do want to move on, but I want to ask you one more question about yes, this please. before we move on. And that is why did all of the early Muslims, at least all the ones that we have records of, that yes. come to a different conclusion than the conclusion that you're coming to? Because the early history of Islam is marked by nothing but offensive war. I, the, over a, the 200 to 300 years after the death of Muhammad, Muslim armies conquered a vast territory from Arabia to Spain to India, and mm -hmm. very, setting up a very large empire through offensive war that they felt was commanded by the Quran. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. Uh, I know, but uh, my brother, I know that even uh, the companion of Prophet Muhammad disagree with each other. For example, Ali radiallahu who was closest companion of Prophet Muhammad was against those offensive uh, you know, wars. Uh, because it is clearly against Quran and he didn't want uh, those wars. So it, it wasn't all companion who wanted to, uh, you know, occupy other countries. And uh, yes, that's, uh, I disagree with that because Quran clearly says that um, you have no right to fight those who do not fight you. And it, uh, even Prophet Muhammad, when he was fighting, he fought at the last and then 
when he got the chance, they uh, offered him the peace treaty. He accepted right away, and he was growing in the peace process. He grew faster uh, than the, during the fight uh, process. And even my my organization, we uh, in Iran, I have to give a good example of that. That uh, sorry, uh, I have to. Somebody called me. So uh, yes, in, in my in Iran. Uh, in 1979, when uh, fascist Khomeini took the power, we had left groups and we had my organization, which was a Muslim group. And uh, yes, the left groups, my brother, they right away after a few months, they started uh, to fight uh, the, the government with weapons. My organization said that, no, no, as long as there is a possibility uh, for, you know, fighting peacefully, despite they were killing us exactly like what was happening during Prophet Muhammad, despite where they were arresting us, but there was a possibility to, uh, you know, to um, sell newspaper, despite it was under a lot of, uh, you know, uh, difficulties and so on. So we continued two and a half years before we, uh, we start to fight against Khomeini with weapons. So we uh, we use that uh, you know teachings of Islam and we didn't do exactly like these Marxist groups did. They after a few months they took the weapon and start to fight Iranian regime and they said that oh this is a, a bad regime and we have to fight. So my organization used that one. So as long as we have the possibility not to fight, we have no right to fight and we have to use the peaceful means and spread our message and. At the last, if there is no any other option, yes, we have the right to defend ourselves. Like a cat, that you put the, the cat in the corner, then the cat starts to attack you, uh, unless the cat run away, you know? If the cat has the, you know, the possibility to run away, yes. Yeah, so uh, I'll just reiterate that I, I do not think that the, the sources support your beliefs. I, I mm -hmm. don't have a problem with your beliefs, but I don't think that the Islamic sources support those. Um, okay. But that's neither here nor there. We're, we're talking yeah. about what your beliefs are, uh, and I, I'm happy to move on to another subject. And uh, I, I did sorry, have a... sorry, sorry, I have to say, uh, are you happy if this belief, this, uh, you know, version spread everywhere and people, uh, Muslims, they adapt because I, I was uh, actually talking to uh, Trinity Channel several years ago, and they also said that we we love this version. And we will, we wish that all Muslims adapt to this version of Islam. Yes. So at least that we would have a peaceful world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let me answer that question two yes. ways um, because this actually gets at the perhaps the one of the heart uh, one of the main differences between the way you and I think uh, about yes. things. So would I. Would I be glad about that in the sense that it would lead to less violence in the world, a better situation for a large number of people? Absolutely. I, I would be glad about that. Um, but from my perspective, uh, as a, a Christian who believes that the only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ, I wouldn't say that those people following this new version or different version of Islam are any better off. The, the only solution to the world's problems, to the, the real problem that is, is at the root of all the things that you describe is that mankind is inherently selfish and mankind is inherently prideful that, that it's all about me, right? And it's all about what I do. And the only thing that actually changes that is if someone's heart is completely changed, that they are born again and become a new person by placing their trust not in their own actions, not in their own ability to do good or avoid evil, but in the completed work of Christ on the cross. That I place my trust in God alone, as opposed to my own ability to resist uh, evil. People can resist evil, right? People can resist evil for a while. And some people will choose not to do so at all. They will choose to take advantage of the world. They, they'll, as one of your examples, accumulate all the wealth for themselves and, and not sharing around. And the only real solution to that isn't political, it isn't uh, military, it is changing the world one person at a time. And I believe that Christianity is the answer to how that change occurs. Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because uh, this was uh, actually the main 
uh, reason we started uh, the the conversation, this show is um, mostly was about this, not about those verses of Quran, uh, which sure. I, I yes, which I uh, unfortunately I disagree with you. Not Islam, not believing in uh, Allah, not believing in Jesus alone, and all these things can change people's behavior. It is because of the system, and I uh, explained what is the system. When you have, when you are living, my brother, on two dollars a day, you automatically, uh, naturally, you go for you know a, a, a lot of things, you know, bad deeds to to survive. So it is the system. that uh, I say Satan uh, is the system that um, allows people, encourages people to do bad deeds and become richer and richer. So the religion uh, that uh, can get rid of this system, that religion is uh, uh, the way out of these, uh, you know, all these problems by just being uh, Christian or Muslim. As we see, there are lots of Christians who are committing all crimes. There are lots of Muslims who, uh, you know, uh, creating uh, a lot of problems uh, because the system allows them to uh, to become richer by, you know, by selling weapons, by uh, spreading, um, you know, conflict here and there. So I don't believe that uh, just believing will help. Okay, it might it help a little bit. Yes, definitely. But not only that. So there is a system that ha- we have to get rid of that system. And I explained that satanic system. Is the problem the source? Not believing in in anything, but but that satanic system is the the source. Yeah, brother. Yeah. So uh, this this comment uh, from Solitar Emmy: Muslims don't truly change. They do works on the outside, but inside, do they they do it to pass the test? They are not regenerate. So this, so I would agree, right, with what you said, basically that. People can do better, right? People can do better than they they do without trying. If people try, they can do better than they otherwise would. I don't disagree with that. The as a Christian, however, I believe that only God can truly change you. Only God can and truly change not just your actions, but your desires and your heart and, and how you you see the the world. And that's because even if Right, you're a really righteous person. Um, you reference Gandhi, even if you, if you're Gandhi, right, and, and you're are doing 98% good or 99% good, you still have that one percent of you that is holding on to the evil, that that is holding on to your natural inclinations to seek your own self-interests. Mm-hmm. Okay, and only God can can make up for that difference because once you've sinned and all people have sinned right all people have done wrong things myself included and yeah. you've fallen no amount of good deeds can make you perfect mm-hmm. it you know if if you start let's just use really small numbers right you, so you have one out of ten of your deeds are bad so you're you're 10 percent bad right then you do 10 good deeds well now 19 out of 20 of your deeds are good but you're 95 percent good right you can never make up that last little bit Uh, even from a human perspective. And of course, God is ultimately good and far above us. It would be ridiculous to say that we're 90% good, but you get the idea, right? That, that there's a yeah. gap that can only be made up by God. And that's where Christianity really is different than any other religion. Every other religion says, do enough good deeds to overcome your bad deeds. Christianity says, you can't do enough good deeds to overcome your bad deeds. Place your trust in God to make up that gap and then do good deeds out of gratefulness for god out of love for god to be their their natural outpouring that you're not doing good deeds for your own benefit you're not doing good deeds to wipe out your bad deeds rather you're doing good deeds because you recognize the immeasurable debt that god has paid on your behalf and you're infinitely grateful for that yes uh okay um i mean i respect your beliefs um i don't have anything against that i just uh believe that uh, <clears throat> there, there is this uh, system you said that interest yeah uh, people uh, you know go after their interest I'm just saying that we have to get rid of that interest so that there is no such a, a things for example uh, I give always this uh, example of uh, <clears throat> uh, let's say a diamond you have a diamond uh, at your home which is uh, 
maybe 10, 20 million dollars. Millions of people would love to, uh, you know, travel to USA and find you and steal that diamond and even perhaps harm you and your family to take that diamond. But if there is a system that that diamond doesn't cost anything, it, it costs zero dollar, then no Satan can fool people to say travel all the way there and commit such a crime to steal that piece of stone. So this is the, <clears throat> that interest is the system that, uh, you know, make people to, to follow their interest and the interest exists in, because of this jungle system if the jungle system doesn't exist that interest will disappear so automatically people will do good deeds they they cannot do bad deeds even if they want to <clears throat> because um i mean it will change of course a, a quran says that one day uh, the planet will be ruled by righteous people so entire planet will be righteous everybody will be righteous so all bad deeds will disappear and that is what i believe that one day we will reach that uh, that uh, world, and yes, I hope that we we reach that world uh, as soon as possible. I'm fighting for that world, my brother. Uh, so, quick housekeeping measure here. Um, so, Martin S says your moderators are deleting comments. I don't feel welcome here. So, I, I obviously can't read all the chat while I'm talking and paying attention. So, I don't know the the backstory here, but. To any moderators who are obviously watching in the, the stream, if you're a moderator, you're definitely also listening, I hope. And please don't delete comments from people just because they're Muslims or just because you don't like what they have to say. The only reason to delete a comment would be if someone is purposely off topic and refuses to get in on topic after warning. So if you if you know someone's blaspheming or insulting uh, Christianity, their comments are allowed to be there. They, as long as they're on topic and relevant to what is being discussed. Now, if they just come in and they start spamming polemics and they won't respond to anything and they won't get on topic, then by all means, uh, they need to go to timeout. Their comments need to be deleted. But don't delete someone's comments just because they are a Muslim. This channel is about reaching Muslims, and I can't reach people if you make them go away as soon as they come in here. So if you're bothered by people's comments and, and you can't handle that, then don't read the chat. Uh, Muslims are welcome here, okay? I, I want to make that clear. And do not insult anybody's belief. <laughs> if you are a Muslim, you have no right to insult anybody. That's that's absolutely wrong. Yeah, so uh, just finishing up uh, the thought there. You know, again, I, I think that people can do better, right? They, they can change to a degree, but I think that mm -hmm. only God can completely change people. And you actually explicitly said that you rejected that idea, basically. You said that uh, you didn't think that just believing would uh, you know, fix anyone. And it's not about belief. Uh, you know, we use the phrase believe in God or believe in Jesus. But it, it's in the same sense of like saying, I believe in the president of the United States or I believe in the president of my company. It means that I trust them. I, I'm placing my trust there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I have a it. I believe they exist or something like mm -hmm. that, which believe could mm -hmm. also mean. But when you say I believe in something, it's like I'm placing my trust. So if I place my trust in God, I'm no longer relying on my own self. That brings about a, a chain. Well, if if God, if Christianity was fake, right, if Christianity wasn't real, would that bring about a change? No, I don't think it would. But it brings about a change because we serve the, the living God who then comes and indwells in the believer and makes them a new person the, that we die to the flesh and we become born again in the spirit and we through the guidance of the holy spirit we live in a way that we could not previously live so that that i i understand you're not a christian right you you won't believe that what i said is true but that's the christian understanding of the situation it's not just like I believe, therefore I'm a better person. No, it's it's that I've placed in my trust in God, accepted his free gift that he offers us, that he gives us this option to live in a completely different way. And I think that when you look at history, it bears out 
that Christians who are really committed, you know, who are really believing in this, who are really all in for Jesus, they have changed the world. They have made it a better place, uh, which testifies to the truth of the what I just said, that God is doing something in this situation and making things better. And I, I, with all due respect, I don't think you can say that about the history of Islam. I don't think that historically Islam has made the places that it, it went to, spread to, better places, even if they weren't Christian places, even if they were polytheistic places. And, you know, when, when uh, Islam conquered India and killed millions of Hindus, I don't think that it made India a better place. I, I don't think that you can point to any time or any place in human history where Islam made the world better. All right. Um, uh, I can do that, but uh, the thing is that uh, I said myself from beginning that uh, Christianity definitely changed a lot of things in the world. I said the example of Romans and Greeks, yeah, is Christianity stopped them. Islam stopped the uh, uh, Arab pagans from burying their daughters alive and uh, a lot of other things. For example, my home uh, country, Persia, yeah, before Islam, we didn't have a single scientist, we didn't have a single, uh, you know, uh, poet, but after Islam, despite I disagree with that occupation, but uh, after uh, Islam, uh, it, Iran was flourished by, uh, you know, scientists and uh, uh, poets, uh, because before Islam, uh, education was only for rich, but after Islam, everybody got the right to educate themselves. And uh, I can give a good example from China, that uh, in China, uh, Unfortunately, um, they, uh, you know, cook dogs alive, they cook cats alive, they skin uh, animals alive and such a, you know, terrible way of living. But Muslims and Christians, I include Christians also, I don't know if there are Jews there, but Muslims and Christians in China, they never do such a, you know, terrible acts against animals. So there are many other things that I can uh, point out. But the, the thing is that I say, I respect your uh, beliefs and I uh, agree that Christianity uh, made the world better. Yes, all I said from beginning, all Abrahamic religion made the world better, but God didn't stop there to, you know, make it just better. God wanted to make it perfect, you know, a beautiful place for humanity. And that's why uh, the final message of God, which is equality, is clear in Islam. I know that many Muslims don't know that yet, uh, but it is the time that we spread it. It is the time that we spread it. So uh, that's why uh, we are trying to spread this uh, message that Mecca means equality. When you go there and you say that I accept it, I follow it. So you have to do it, not just come back again to your uh, previous life and continue the same way. No, you have to fight for equality because inequality is the source of all bad deeds and God wants us to get rid of all, uh, you know, this inequality so that the world will be a perfect place. Uh, you know, not this jungle that I mentioned from beginning. And I said, I say it again, I became a Muslim just because of that, not because God exists. If a God cannot guide us to a better world, to such a world, then for me, that God is, uh, you know, useless. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have to say that, okay? Honestly, I say, if a God cannot guide us, cannot solve our problems, teach us. I don't say that he has to come and fix our problems, you know? Like some atheists say that, why he doesn't do that? No, he created us to fix the problem by his guidance. His guidance is that, uh, you know, solve the problems. The only thing is that we have to understand it and we have to follow it, yes? Yeah, brother. Yeah, uh, so you made some bold claims there, um, but, but first you provided some possible examples of how Islam has made the world a better place. And I would welcome uh, another discussion with you on a different day where you can cite specific examples, you know, with uh, historical sources where you think that Islam made specific places and, and situations better. And I can do the same for Christianity and we can kind of compare there because your claim was that Christianity made things better, but Islam makes things perfect. Now, perfect, that is a very bold claim, right? You, you say that Islam 
makes things perfect. Will make, will make, will not make. hasn't made. Will, yeah. <laughs> will make, yeah. But, but well, that, yeah, that, that's a good clarification. And I, I did yes. realize that you didn't think it's yes. perfect now. Yeah. Uh, no, but, but I said, I uh, said it will make, and I said that unfortunately, most Muslims haven't understood it yet. Okay, so I said most Muslims haven't understood it yet. And they go to Mecca, they just go there and then like, sorry, I have to say like this blindly, they just, uh, you know, do um, uh, some ceremony, I can say, yeah, without understanding it, why it is that, why they have to do that and why they have to prostrate towards Mecca. So this is what we are going to try to change, to teach them that it is this equal war that God wants us to live in. Yes, my brother. Sorry, I inter interrupted you. No, 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 you're, you're fine. So, yes. you know, I would welcome, uh, you know, taking a good look at the data because uh, you, you can say that most Muslims haven't understood that yet. And well, I mean, I would agree with that, but I would think that's probably because they, the, the scriptures of, of Islam aren't teaching it. But regardless, uh, you can say that, you know, it isn't yet there, right? That it hasn't mm -hmm. been made perfect, but no. it should at least make things better than Christianity or, mm -hmm. or it has no purpose because Let's be honest, most of the lands where Islam is prevalent are lands where Christianity was priorly uh, pre prevalent, that they, they were Christian lands and they've been converted to Islamic lands. So they should at least be make it better than the Christians made the land, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so okay. I would welcome. Yeah, yeah, right, I, yeah, I don't expect you to have the hard data yes. in front of no, you. Okay. And no, okay, no problem. We can look at yeah. that a different day. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I do want to cover at least one more topic here. You've made comments about equality a number of times, and that Islam teaches uh, equality, which sounds like a great idea, right? If Islam teaches equality, I, that doesn't necessarily mean the religion as a whole is true, but that at least would be something to celebrate. However, I don't find any justification for that claim that Islam teaches equality. Uh, John Felix gave one example, and I have other examples we can go to, but he says that Allah doesn't allow Muslims to wish peace on non-Muslims. So even something as small as that, right? Uh, the way that you greet Muslims is uh, supposed to be different than the way that you greet non-Muslims when, when you see them on the street or whatever. And now that's going to come from a hadith. Uh, it's, Muhammad's going to say that Allah said it. So mm -hmm. one possibility is that you will reject the Hadith, which actually, before before you answer that, uh, someone did ask if you were Shia or Sunni, which makes a big difference, right? If we're All talking right. about Hadith. All right, yes. Um, uh, I, ha I said I have converted to Islam, okay? I'm not a Shia, I'm not a Sunni. I accept something from Shiism, something from Sunnism, whatever is matching with Quran, even Hadith. I'm not a Quranist. I reject a lot of hadiths from Bukhari and others, but the uh, you know hadiths that matches Quran, uh, and it is in chapter four, verse eighty to eighty-three that Allah says that if it doesn't match Quran, then it's not from your Lord. Okay, and we have to reject it. So if uh, a hadith doesn't match, even I'm uh, I've said it. Uh, I'm against these uh, hadiths that says the Prophet Muhammad split the moon because it's not mentioned in Quran. Chapter 54, verse 1, absolutely doesn't say Prophet Muhammad split the moon. It is about the hour. So, but these, uh, you know, hadith fabricators, they have taken it uh, and made up a lot of, you know, fabricated hadiths about how Prophet Muhammad split the moon, which is not in men uh, mentioned in Quran. So, yes, I, uh, I agree with rationality mostly not uh, you know blindly follow uh, anything that scholars says a lot of uh, yeah. scholars in all religions i have to say yes in all religions we have priests uh, imams and uh, monks who are abusing religion for their own interests unfortunately yes my brother yes yeah yeah so a uh, fair answer there uh, that you just uh, you know, you apply your own rationality to decide um, what the, the scriptures mean and which scriptures are consistent with the Quran. So let's just stick directly with the Quran here mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, on the same line, not the same words as what John said, but the same line that there seems to definitely be a hierarchy in the Quran. Muslims are called the best of all creatures. Jews and Christians are called the worst of all creatures. Now, you, you personally think that uh, Christians who do good 
uh, Jews who do good, that they're in, accepted by Allah. Um, and you could be accepted and still be, you know, a, the worst creature, I suppose, right? That So it's not about acceptance here. It's about oh. the, the inherent inequality of Muslims being the best and, and Jews and Christians being the worst. Where it says that Muslim, a Christian, is it chapter 98, verse 6? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yes, it says, indeed, they who commit kufr among the people of the scripture and the politists will be in the fire of hell, abating entirely dirty. Those are the worst creatures. Yes, is that one? Yes, yes. Yes, okay, it says, indeed, they who commit kufr. First of all, we have to understand what is kufr. Kof is oppression. Kof is rejecting the uh, commands of God, which I explained from beginning, good deeds, avoiding bad deeds. And it says, those who commit kof among the people of scriptures and the polities. So it is not all Christians and not all polities and, and not all Christ, uh, sorry, Jews. It is among them. When you say among Americans are, for example, racist, it doesn't mean Americans. It, if he says Americans, then it would be uh, all Americans. So when it says, uh, for chapter 16, verse 83 says, they recognize the favor of Allah, then they deny it. Who are they? They are disbelievers. And it says, and most of them are kafir. So most of disbelievers are kafir, not all of them. Okay. Chapter 98, verse 1. Those who commit kuf among the people of the scriptures and the polities did not give up kuf until there came to them clear evidence. And then again, that uh, verse 98, 6, it's also saying among people of the script, uh, among Christian and Jews and the, uh, and the polities who commit kuf. And I have said it uh, a, a lot of times, kuf is oppression, kuf is doing bad deeds, okay? So it is not uh, disbelief. Chapter uh, uh, 4, uh, verse... So yes. I, uh, you can finish your verses, but I do want you to justify that statement that 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 uh, Kof is not disbelief because that is how people normally understand the term. Right? Okay. And, yes. And you're even reading the translation that's translating it as yes, disbelief. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I say that these translators, uh, they, for example, if you go to chapter 54, verse one, they uh, they say that uh, uh, the moon was split in two you know, which there is no such a thing in the Arabic one. So chapter, um, let me see, chapter 2, verse 256 says, let there be no compulsion in religion, for the truth stands out clear from falsehood. So uh, whoever becomes kafir against tyrants and believes in God. So here in this verse, kuf is a good thing, you know, those who reject the tyrants, okay? So Kof is rejected. Chapter, um, uh, let me read for you. Oh, hold on, hold on a second. Yes, yes. So uh, if, if that's disbelieves or rejects, then that makes perfect sense. But you're saying that it's about oppression. So you're yes. saying whoever oppresses whatever yeah. tag HUD is, I don't actually know what that is, yes. and, and believes in Allah. Um, and, and just notice the parallel, right? It disbelieves in one thing, believes in another. Again, seems to be translated as believes. Even when you are arguing for it, you you kind of translated it that way. And but when it comes to that other verse, you want to say that it's about oppression, not disbelief. And I I think it's cl quite clearly about what someone believes, not their actions. <clears throat> no, it's a, it's about rejecting the uh, commands of God. Yes, here I read for you chapter. 2 verse 34, when we told the angels, bow down before Adam, they all bowed, but not Iblis, Iblis is the Satan, who refused and was arrogant and he became a kafir. So Satan didn't become a disbeliever. He just rejected Allah's command. That was his kufr. So the kufr is mentioned in many verses that I can read for you. Chapter 99 verse 66, make, make no excuse. You have committed kuf after your belief. If we pardon one faction of you, we will punish another faction because they were criminals. So uh, 
there are many verses that I can read for you that Kof is doing bad deeds. And then again, the verse which I we, you have put it there is among Christian and Jews. And when you put it again beside, and I said that among means not all of them. And those verses which I read before, 3, 113 to 50, Allah says that they are not all the same. All Christian and Jews are not the same. There are good Christian and Jews. There are bad Christian and Jews like good Muslim and bad Muslims, okay? So this is not about, uh, you know, all uh, Christian and Jews. Understand? Uh, uh, well, I understand that's what you believe about it. But let's just look at, at Surah 98. So those who disbelieved among the people of the scriptures and the polytheists mm -hmm. were not to be parted until there came to them clear evidence. Mm -hmm. So... If, if this is belief, right, if this is belief, that makes sense, that, that people are believing the wrong thing, they're not believing in Allah, but they're not being held accountable until there comes evidence. Now, mm -hmm. if you're saying those who were oppressing people among the, pe the people of the book uh, were not to be parted until there came clear evidence, evidence doesn't really go with an action, it goes with a belief. Okay. And then continuing a messenger from Allah reciting purified scripture. So this seems to be the evidence, right? That there came to them clear evidence, a messenger from Allah reciting purified scriptures within which are correct writings. Nor did those who were given the scripture become divided until after there had come to them clear evidence. So they, the division here, right? So some, mm -hmm. something is dividing the people. Some of the, yeah. the Jews and the Christians are doing something that's good and some of them are doing something that's bad. It doesn't yes. happen until it comes to them clear evidence, which is apparently Muhammad coming with corrected scriptures. Yes. So they weren't, so it's not the oppressors and the not oppressors, it's those who believed the correct things and those who didn't. So what is the division? Those who follow Muhammad and those who don't follow Muhammad. And they were not commanded to worship except to Allah, a sincere to him in religion, inclined to truth and established prayer and give zakah. And that is the correct religion. So Islam is the correct religion. The, the, what the messenger has brought in the purified scriptures is the correct religion. This is dividing people. Some of them believe in Muhammad. Some of them don't. And, the, and then it says, indeed, those who disbelieved in Muhammad among the people of the scriptures and the polytheists would be in the hell, fire of hell, abiding eternally therein. They are the worst of creatures. Those Jews and Christians who reject Muhammad, don't accept what he has to say, are disbelievers and are the worst of all creatures. In other words, people who don't convert to Islam are what this verse is about. All right. So... Uh when you see that it says among, uh, uh, where that one is uh, very clear. Right, right. That some, it's some not of all the of them. Right. It's not all of them. It's not, it's not all of them. Some mm -hmm. of the Jews and Christians, some of the people of the book, are not included in this. And it's specifically yeah. those who believe. In what? Okay. In okay. a messenger from Allah. So the Jews and Christians who believe that Muhammad is a true prophet, they are the people who are not included among the Jews and Christians. But then they are not Jews hell. and Christian. If they believe that Muhammad was a prophet of God, then they would be a Muslim. You know, they, right. And well, so they right. disbelieved past tense among the people of the scripture. So people sorry. of the book. Right. Sorry, so, sorry. Uh, so, so here, here, here's what I'm sorry. I have to say that. Uh, sorry, I have to interrupt you that uh, it is not just Christian and Jews. A politist also included in that. So it is correct, not correct, about correct. religion, yes. And then deen, deen is not religion, deen is the law, okay? In Quran, deen is not religion, it is law. It say it doesn't say religion, correct religion, it says correct law, okay? They don't follow the correct law, understand? So in Arabic, it's written deen, and there is a, uh, I have forgotten. So, so deen, deen doesn't mean law, it, it means like the system of, List. Yes, the system. It's the not, system of it's the not identical to religion. I'll give you that, but it's not identical to law either. You can't just substitute in the word law there. Sharia means law. Yes. Dean is, you know, like the complete political system of Islam. Uh, so religion, it's kind of religion, but it's not exactly the same thing as religion, but it's definitely not the same thing as 
uh, law. So you can't just substitute in law. If you want to say it's the correct dean, I will give you that, but I'm not going to let you substitute in law there. Okay, because there are, uh, I, I don't remember the verse, but uh, there is a verse that uh, Allah talks about the dean of the, the king. There is a king, uh, I forgot uh, the name, uh, that Allah says the dean of that king. So it is not the religion of that king, it's the law of that king, okay? So uh, if you want later, I can put it for you in the, uh, you know, in the mail. I mean, we, and I'll send you yeah, we, you. we can go ahead. I mean, no problem. Yes. I, I can pull up the word by word here and we can see where else uh, it is used in the Quran. No problem. But just give me one there. OK, mm -hmm. so here uh, it's used, you know, obviously a number of times in the Quran, a yeah. whole bunch of times. But yes. as you can see, it, it's always translated either judgment or religion. It's not translated as law a single time. It uh, looks like here once is worship, once uh, recompense, which that's a very odd translation. Okay. But uh, it, it, so it, it, you know, my you can fault. look it up later and see which yeah, version my, yes. means something my, different. Yes. My I, fault, I, I, yes. Sorry, my fault that I don't have the, the verse, but I will send it to you definitely uh, to your uh, email that there is a mm -hmm. verse that talking about the deal of the king, not a Muslim king, uh, uh, oppressive king, okay? So well, that, but, uh, yes. but, uh, but uh, a non-Muslim king can have a religion too. So just because it's describing a king, unless in context it's clear that it's law. Yes, yes. Since I don't know what you're referring to, I, I can't comment yes. on the context. Yeah, but okay, in, yes. Just because it's a foreign mm -hmm. king doesn't mean he can't have uh, a religion. All right. No, anyway, it's, uh, I, I will send it to you. It clearly uh, uh, says okay. that yeah, I, I look forward to seeing that. No problem. Yes. Anyway, this is uh, what I said is that uh, it is not about all Christian and it is very clear is among Christian Jews and polities that uh, they are commit kof and uh, the kof is um, doing bad deeds, rejecting God's commands. OK, and I have uh, given uh, a lot of verses that uh, not even uh, only Christian, not only believers, even non-believers are. Uh, let me uh, bring for you a clear verse that uh, says chapter 49 verse 13 clearly says it's uh, uh, other uh, what is it the scholars also say say that Allah is talking to the entire mankind it says that oh mankind indeed we have created you from male and female and made you people and tribes that you may know one another indeed the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you indeed Allah is no all knowing uh, all aware. So Allah is uh, doesn't care about your beliefs. Allah cares about your actions. And there are lots of verses that you enter heaven just because of your your actions, not because of your beliefs. Okay. So I can read all those verses for you if you want. But uh, this is our understanding. Yeah, I mean, you can read all the, the those verses, but it doesn't change what the uh, mm -hmm. context of 98.6 say, is saying, and that's that people yeah. rejected the clear evidence of Muhammad, mm -hmm. that they rejected Muhammad, and now they're considered the, the worst of all creatures. Okay. Uh, but let, let's move on to a, a different mm -hmm. type of equality, inequality. Yes. I, I, so, of course, uh, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, the organization that you're a part of uh, accepts women as being equal but that's yeah. not the, the standard position that, that's been held throughout islamic mm -hmm. history and yes. it doesn't seem to be the position of the quran the quran says that allah has made the the man dominant over the woman or he's made her the made the man uh responsible over the woman uh, that the the woman holds a different role than the man and, and that the man is in a better light in in view of Allah. And I know you don't accept the Hadith, but the Hadith support that or you don't support. Sorry to be clarified. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, misrepresent you that you don't support or believe in all Hadith um, mm -hmm. that the the Hadith suggests the same idea that, that women mm -hmm. are inherently inferior to men. So what would you say? to that okay but uh i just read for you allah says we 
all men and women. Well, okay? he, yeah, well, he said he created all. Equal. That, yes, that you are equal. He, they're yes, equal. Yes. And then uh, which verse you are referring, if you are, uh, I don't know which verse you are referring that uh, Allah says that, uh, uh, let me see, that men are above women and so on. Uh, yeah, so just one one second here. Uh, you know, I should probably spend time to <laughs> to memorize these numbers, but <laughs> okay, no, 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 you don't have to. Just you, if you remember, uh, because I have to see the verse if it says that men are. <clears throat> it only doesn't say uh, superior that that word for word, uh, mm -hmm. but let me just find it real quick. Yeah, so 434, yes. Yeah, 434, <laughs> yes. It's a very uh, controversial um, uh, verse. So, it's so saying men, men are... are providers of women by what Allah has given uh, one over the other and what they spend from their wealth is about spending, is about incoming, so righteous women are devoting, guarding in the absent, uh, husband's absence, uh, what Allah would have them guard, okay? But those uh, wives, if you want, I can continue to rest, and that, but that would yeah, be another. Uh, yeah, the, that would be another the, subject. The but beating, it says, right, we can yes. leave the beating aside. Yes. That's not really what, uh, yes, yeah. you know. Why yeah, so it's, it up. says that, it says that uh, men are provider, okay? It's not saying that men are over or, have any privilege because men were usually getting uh, more uh, inherit and they were working at that time women usually were home they were not uh, having any you know income so that's all uh, is about it's not about that men are over or superior to women uh, chapter 49 verse 13 clearly said that the best of you in in the sight of allah is the most righteous of you men or women no problem they are you are all equal yes uh, so let me just read uh the sahih international translation and then we can go to the word by word because it's it's going to come down to you know how you're translating these words men are in charge of women by what allah has given one over the other and what they spend from their wealth mm -hmm. uh, so men are in charge of women okay and allah has given one over the other uh, the, a better translation really is that Allah has preferred one over the other. But even in yes. the, the, you know, the yeah, they, are, they are different. Yeah, they are different translation. Yes, I understand. Yeah, different right, understanding right. of it. Yes. But, but you know, like even in Saudi International, right? Allah has given one over the other. That uh, men have been given a different status than women. Yes. And, right? So there's two things. There's two reasons why men are in charge of women. One is that Allah has, has preferred one over the other or given one over the other. And the mm -hmm. second reason is what they spend from their wealth. Because so men take care of women, they spend their own money on women. Mm -hmm. That's one of the two reasons why men are in charge of women. But the other is because of Allah's preference, right? Mm -hmm. Allah has given men a status that is over women. Yes, as I said, it's how you, uh, you know, translate it and interpret it because uh, <clears throat> even uh, they have interpreted uh, something, nashus, as, uh, uh, what is it? Um, if a husband um, fear disobedience, yes, obedience, yeah, yeah, which is absolutely wrong. It is not disobedience. Is Nashus is um, when they fear that she has uh, done something wrong, okay? Because if she's disobedient, then you are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Fear, because you see it, but this is something that you might suspect okay what you suspect it's some and there is a, a nashus in another verse by the way uh, let me uh, find it another way about women uh, uh, sorry oh believers yeah so uh, let the woman but, but, but before you you go on real quick there mm -hmm. um so uh, mary says that nahaz means uppedness which is how Saudi International is translated, right? They've translated it as arrogance. Mm -hmm. But even if you, you say it's doing wrong deeds, 
it's merely fearing like if the man fears that a woman has done something wrong then yes. he has the right to discipline her oh. uh, does the, a woman doesn't have the same right a woman doesn't okay. have the right to discipline her husband because she fears that he did something wrong okay um, so discipline, discipline I, I, and you know, you're making things you're harder on yourselves. I didn't even need to, I wasn't even trying to go to this, right? I wasn't even trying no. to go there. I was just trying to look at the, the first part, but you're making things harder by, by going there as well, because it's consistent that men have a status that is above women, that they have certain rights over women and women don't have any comparable rights over men. Okay. All right. Uh, so just you, yeah, you say discipline means that you are, you believe that they have the right to beat her. But I have uh, the translation that it says that uh, you leave her. And then chapter four, verse 128, the same chapter. If a woman fears indifference, so this is the same thing in chapter four, verse 34, the nashus, yeah, which we they uh, translated disobedience. But here in chapter four, 128, 28 uh, uh, verse 128 none of them translate the same word as disobedience because a man doesn't disobey uh, uh, his wife so it says if a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband there is no blame on either of them if they seek fair settlement which is best humans are ever inclined to uh, selfishness. So anyway, I don't uh, continue. But the thing is that in chapter four, verse 34, um, my translation says, leave her. The third part is leave her. And next verse, clearly, uh, uh, verse 35 says, and in case you fear split between the two, then send forth a judge from his family and a judge from her family in case they both are willing to act righteously allah will cause them to reach an agreement so allah here wants to make this life to continue and he knows everybody knows by beating your wife it doesn't change anything okay it, it worsens the problem so yes. i'm gonna i'm gonna be very generous i'm gonna give you your translation right I, i'm not gonna dispute the words i'm just gonna say exactly what you said right so mm -hmm. in 434 because there's still going to be an inequality here even okay. even in your interpretation so if the man fears uh uh you said bad deeds right so if he fears that his wife's done something wrong then he mm -hmm. is to advise her mm -hmm. forsake her in bed and mm -hmm. You said leave her. Leave her. Uh, now, mm -hmm. yes. Well, there's no finally. That that's added by the translator. Yes. Uh, okay. It, uh, After, I mean, the third the third option is leave her. Yes. There's three options, but there's no yeah. there's no sequence in, in Arabic. But that's unimportant here, right? So yeah. he has he has those three options. He, yes. he can advise her. He can uh, forsake her in bed, or he can leave her. Now, if a woman fears that her husband has done something wrong, there's nothing wrong no sin so there's nothing wrong if they come to terms right they, they they make a settlement between the two parties yes so the man in your translation your your generous translation of 434 the man unilaterally decides that he's going to leave the woman in 128 the woman if the man agrees it's and they come to a mutual settlement, there's not a problem with that. Allah doesn't okay. mind if they work things out between them. So there's still an inequality. Even in your translation, there's still an inequality because the man has a unilateral right to leave his wife. The woman only has a right to negotiate a settlement whereby she gives up some of her marital rights in exchange for something from her husband. Okay, but uh, even chapter four, verse 34 next verse Allah wants again to bring them if uh, they are going to separate uh, Allah wants them uh, to come back together yeah, well, yeah, yeah. settlement yes, is yes. best right yes settlement he is best. Them. yes and the thing I, I is agree that, with yes, that yes, but yes, again I, yeah sorry I, I have to say like this and I agree that and I agree that 1400 years ago situation was different and men were stronger the uh, women were weaker they didn't even today in many many uh, third world countries uh, women have less right so but uh, uh, in the sight of allah okay i have to say this one clearly 
in chapter 49, verse 13, in the sight of Allah, we are all equal, okay? Yes, in the sight of people, we are not equal. And where he wants us to be equal, he uh, because we are all in the sight of him, we are equal. So we should see each other equal today. Uh, yes, I understand that 1400 years ago was different. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, let, I will look at 4913 here in just a second, but I just wanted to confirm that I'm understanding you correctly, that you are acknowledging that there is a difference here and you're saying that it was for that particular time, but it's not necessarily true for today. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm glad you acknowledge there is a difference. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at what 4913 says. Mm -hmm. So it says, O mankind, we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. Now, what I'm seeing in this verse, and you can you can help me understand, but what I'm seeing is that Allah created everything, right? And he created he created some people to be men and he created some people to be women created some people in one tribe and he created other people in another tribe and that a second a second thought is that the most noble of people is the one who is most righteous mm -hmm. uh, ironically being more someone being more noble than someone else means that there is a difference here so i, I don't see anything that supports uh equality I, now, I, I can't see how you'd say that, you know, we're all created in, in from Allah. We all are created, you know, in the same way. But the verse doesn't actually say that. All it says is that he created everything and that some people are more righteous than other people. Now, someone who wanted to say that men are inherently superior to women would just say, and the most noble are men. Right. That's all he would have to say. Or, or are often men. Right. It's not like universal, like the, the most noble man or the most noble woman might be like, you know, way up here above 99% of men. But the general rule is that on average, women are less noble than men. Uh, <laughs> someone could easily say because they're less righteous, which right. uh, the Quran, uh, at least Muhammad, I think the Quran implies that, that women can't be as noble as men because they're not allowed to pray when they are on their period, so, which is a biological trait that Allah created them. So then he would inherently create them unequal. But you explain where I'm wrong. All right. Um, this is um, what I said is that it says clearly uh, men and women. We created you men and women. And the best of you, both men and women, uh, in the sight of Allah is the one, uh, the most noble one uh, or the, the most righteous one. And uh, yes, for me and for my organization, for us, uh, we see it uh, as equal, we are all equal in the sight of God, uh, Allah, and uh, which is, of course, uh, Allah, we know that it is uh, Arabic word for God. So in the sight of God, we are all equal, and uh, it is in the sight of people that we are not equal. Uh, it has been throughout the history, and uh, uh, as believers, we have to follow uh, uh, God's commands, and we have to see uh, us all equal, that we, men and women are also equal, the best of, uh, for example, in my organization, uh, women are leaders because of their righteousness. OK, uh, we have a, a woman as our president, OK, because she's the most righteous one uh, because she has. And that's not in, in reality. In that verse is not righteous. The sacrifice, it says the most taqwa. Taqwa is interpreted for us as uh, sacrifice, the one who sacrificed most. Mother Teresa was one of those, for example. Yeah, Mother Teresa was one of those who sacrificed most. So she is one of the most righteous one. It's not uh, her gender that make her, uh, what is it, um, make her uh, righteous. Uh, sorry, the, the best one. It is her deeds, okay, brother? Yeah, so I... I... You're, you're saying some things that are, are true, uh, and I, I want to acknowledge that, right? You're saying that everyone is created by a law, and that mm -hmm. in some sense you could see equality there. And you're saying that people are judged based on their righteousness, not their gender. Both of those mm -hmm. things are correct about this verse. But then you're adding an additional thing, saying that everyone is equal, which the verse doesn't actually say. That's just your interpretation. Uh, 
it, it's highly possible that a, a woman in line with this verse, right? It's highly possible in line with both this verse and the inequality, general inequality, that an individual woman could be highly righteous, that some some woman is way up here on the, on the righteous scale and almost all men are below her. But that isn't doesn't mean that the average woman is equal to the average man, right? You know, they're way down here in comparison to that woman, both of the average man and average woman. That woman's way above this man. But that doesn't mean that the average man might not be a little bit above the average woman. Uh, so I'm not seeing equality declared here in the Quran. All okay. I'm seeing is inequality declared in the uh, the in marriage that we already looked at. We can also look at in legal circumstances and in inheritance. There's inequality. So I, I see several verses in the Quran that imply inequality, and uh, I'm guessing that you'll you know you'll provide a cultural explanation for all of them. But I'm not seeing any verse that explicitly teaches equality. All I'm seeing is inequality between men and women. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I I said that it is not only me. We are uh, millions in our Right, opinion. right. I, I, yes, I'm yes. sure that other people believe the same thing. I'm not yes, saying yes, that sir. you've made this yes. up, right? Okay, uh, yes. I'm just so, saying so that I'm see. not seeing that in yeah, the yeah. text. All right. Yeah, anyway, so this is our understanding. This is our belief. This is our Islam, that we believe in it, and we want to spread it, and we believe that uh, all women and men are absolutely equal. Uh, as as I said, uh, we even have given the privilege to women. Uh, mo most of the in organization, 70% are men, 30% are women. But out of leadership, 70% are women, 30% are men, uh, men, because we believe that women have been oppressed thousands of years and we have to help them to lift them up to show that they can. And as I said, we have... Uh, you know, chosen a president, a woman president in our organization, a Muslim. And I said that that uh, uh, Jordanian parliamentarian, she also met my leader and said that if you take the power in Iran, the entire Middle East will stand up for their rights. Women all want to, you know, get their equal rights. Yes. I so it is that. our beliefs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll accept that that is your belief. And now I want to show you what the Bible says. And this is what I would expect as a statement of equality, something unambiguous like this. Mm -hmm. so start, Galatians chapter 3, starting with verse 23. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, we are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put it on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offsprings, heirs according to promise. So he says the, in the previous state, right? In the previous state before... The, the completion of the biblical story brought about by the work of Christ, before that point, there was differences. There was Jews, there was Greeks, there were slaves, there was free, there were men, there were women. But now you are justified not by the things of the world, you are justified by your faith and your guardians of Christ. You are all children of God on equal standing. It's as if there are no Jews or Greeks. I mean, obviously, technically, People are still Jew and people are still Greek, right? And here in the first century, this is the division between people who are ethnically Jews and people who have accepted uh, Christ as Savior but are not ethnically Jews. They're Greeks, right? And they're still technically people who are slaves and people who are free. Uh, slavery was not abolished in the first century. There are people who lived as slaves. There are people who lived in fr as, as free persons. There obviously were still males and females after people accept Christ. But it's as if there's no differences because you're all one in Christ. You all have been baptized into Christ. You've put on Christ. You are seen through God's eyes as if you were Christ. You are all sons of God through your faith in Jesus. So this is what I would expect as a statement of equality. And it's not what I see in the Quran. All right. Um, uh, chapter 16, verse 97. Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is uh, uh, faithful, uh, we will surely cause him to live a good life. And we will surely give he, them 
their reward according to the best of what they used to do. Chapter 40, verse 40. Whoever does an evil deed will not be recompensed uh, except by the like uh, thereof. But whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is uh, faithful, uh, those will enter paradise, being given uh, provision therein without account. Chapter 3, verse 195. And their, their Lord responded to them, never will I allow to be lost the work of uh, work, uh, sorry, worker among you, whether male or female, you are of one another. So those who uh, immigrate, uh, sorry, immigrated, or were evicated uh, from their homes or were home uh, harmed in my cows or fought. Okay, that's anyway, it's a long verse. Chapter 4, verse 124. But those who do good deeds, whether male or female, and have faith will enter paradise and will not be wronged by as uh, much as a tiny bit. Anyway, so there are many verses that uh, I right. Can so all of those verses, right? All of those verses say that your deeds are more important than your your yes. gender. Yes. Right? More important than your status. And, and I would agree that that is a teaching of the Quran. That's a teaching of Islam. Mm -hmm. But notice this is actually inherent inequality. And yes. if you're better because of what you do, then you're better than someone else. In Christianity, there's actual equality, right? That everyone is viewed in this as in the same standing based on Christ's imputed righteousness. So every believer is viewed on the same standing. Some aren't better because they've done more good deeds than others. Mm -hmm. They are all equal. We are all children of God. None of us brings anything to the table that leads to our salvation in Christianity. We are all equally undeserving of God's love, right? We are all equally deserving of condemnation for our actions. We've done an unequal amount of bad actions, but we're all equally deserving of condemnation because one bad deed is enough to be deserving of condemnation for that one bad deed. Mm -hmm. In Islam, you're saying that there's an inequality because some people do more good deeds than other people. Some people are more righteous than other people. And that's not incompatible with there being a general inequality between the sexes as well, that men might be inclined to do more good deeds than women are inclined to do. I'm not saying that that verse means that. I'm just, I'm just saying that it allows for that possibility in other verses in the Quran. You know, there are many verses that say you're judged primarily by your deeds. And I agree with that, right? I said that a woman could be better than 99% of men in Islam. But that doesn't mean that there's equality if, you know, 70% of men are better than 70% of women. That means that men on average are better, even if a ex particular woman is well above most men. All right. So anyway, uh, I don't know. I just said what we believe. Okay, this is what we yep, yep, believe. Yep, yep. Yes. And that's fine. Right? That's yes, fine. That's right? I, I understand and that you personally believe yes. in equality, and I, and, I, and I accept that that's what you believe. Yes, okay. And, and what I'm trying to tell you is I think that you can support that belief much better from the okay. Christian scriptures than you can from the Islamic text. Yeah, and, I, and I'm a Christian. I've said it many times that uh, when it comes to beautiful teachings of uh, Jesus speech beyond him. I'm a Christian. I'm a Jew. I, I follow every, uh, you know, beautiful teachings of anybody, even if a politician say something nice or a philosopher say something nice. So I accept it and I follow it. Uh, uh, Brother Jonas uh, is getting a little bit late here. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I actually going to propose that yes. we wrap up as well. So, so, so I just would like time. to say, yes, I would like to say those who would like to talk to me, they are always welcome. We have Christians, we have uh, atheists who call in every Saturdays. Um, I go live uh, on my channel and you're welcome to call in and to have a nice discussion like we had today with my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and uh, yes, we always uh, love, uh, spread the, the beautiful teachings of Jesus Christ beyond him, love one another. That's a great, beautiful teachings and uh, we want to spread that, okay? 
So please mm -hmm. welcome, and um, I love to unite with everybody against our common problems. Yes, my brother. Excellent. So All right. we'll close <laughs> out you. here with a, a few yes. final thoughts from myself. Uh, okay. I really enjoy having these conversations with Perfect Dala. I know that I get some flack from people in the chat who want me to be <laughs> more aggressive, more frankly rude, that they, they want me to cut them off, they don't want me to let them talk so long, whatever. Yeah. You don't want to watch it, don't watch it. I, yeah. I don't <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> but, but I enjoy these conversations and I think that they are productive. And I think that we've seen some important differences between Christianity and Islam today. We saw that, that Christianity is entirely not works-based, that it is about placing your trust in, in God and relying on him Whereas in Islam, you're, you're considered righteous by your deeds. Uh, we also saw that uh, there are verses of the Quran which seem to support violence and other verses that seem to be against it. And there's a, a conflict that every Muslim has to resolve in one way or another. I would suggest that perhaps the best solution is that there's just a conflict, that the Quran just teaches different things and because it is a human work written over a long period of time that the author or authors of the text changed their mind on issues and, and said different things at different times. That'd be my suggestion. You know, different Muslims can come to their own conclusions. Uh, we also saw that that perfect Dawah often has, uh, let me be blunt, that he has a, a better religion than what most Muslims hold to. And I think that's because he is honestly you know just being blunt here that he is rejecting a large portion of what islam teaches and i salute him as a human being as a person for being better than what muslims have traditionally adhered to but i would say that that means that you're correcting allah that you're correcting your scriptures you're saying that this is just for this time and place it's not for all of eternity uh, and Allah could have been clear. He could have said that this is, you know, temporary. The ideal is something different if he wanted to. And I would encourage you to study the Christian scriptures more because I think that most of what you believe is found in Christianity, and I think it's found better there. So those are my final thoughts. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you for having me here. And it was a pleasure talking to you. All right. <laughs> Take care. All righty. God bless you and peace be with you, my brother. Take care. Okay. God Thank bless. You. God bless. Uh, you. So, uh, I'll be back on Tuesday with Mary. We'll be looking at the Trinity. On Thursday, I'll be on your brother, or I'm sorry, I'll be on El Iso Elohim's channel looking at the anniversary of the holes in the narrative. Uh, I think three, maybe four years ago on that day, uh, Yasser Qadi went on. Muhammad Hijab's channel. He thought that he could be the new prophet of Islam and get people out of this embarrassing belief that the Quran is perfectly preserved. Turns out he couldn't. And there was too much pushback. He ended up retracting everything, but it was too late. This is the internet. He'll live on forever for his famous statement about the standard narrative in reference to the preservation of the Quran, having gaping holes in it, that it is a Muslim trying to talk about this is like the emperor with no clothes that everyone can see, and everyone who's not blinded, right, can clearly see that this narrative is false, but the Muslim has to keep repeating it anyway. So that should be fun. And then Friday, we have the next get together of the apologetic supergroup. I'll invite on all kinds of people. We'll have an open call in show for Muslims who want to come and give their thoughts. Should be a good time should be very informative. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Don't forget about the fundraiser for Rob of Sentinel Apologetics. Again, the link is pinned at the top there. Uh, if you weren't here at the start and you, you don't know what I'm talking about, if you click on it, you can get the information about why we're doing this fundraiser at the fundraiser itself. I'll put a link to that in the comments as well and pin that for you to find it easily later if you're watching this on a replay or whatever and and you need that. Thank you all for joining us today. Pursue truth wherever it leads you. Go and serve the Lord. God bless.